Sean's gonna press it. You it's official it. chair duty, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. Well, okay. Well, That's why she said she was coming. Just to sign up. So, Sean, you're watching the chat, right? Just thought it'd be uh, better yep. way to do it. Will you let me know when Ron or someone from RHR Smith shows up? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> music and dance I don't know. That. People would get confused, I think, Carol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, cool. <laughs> She's getting really ugly. Yeah, that's an idea. Yeah. But um, when you ask you about skates, I know it is. I saw the skate like the same as I would say the skates I've ever had. Yeah. Still, but hips, is that even a nice thing? Yeah. Yeah. But somebody in gym is there. I never joined on here. Same idea as I mean, do you want to race? Or do you want to? Um, I think no, right. Right. Yeah, 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 let's shoot. Oh, they're just in the main arm. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was my fault. I joined the audio. Yeah. Yeah. I that might be an issue. It's like a cheap yeah. Actually, Ben, could you let yeah. me start to grab uh, Carol's letters off of the. Uh, yeah. 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 Just on that basket in the front there. Yep, yeah. yep. It's about ten pounds. Yeah, yeah. they're expanding yeah. gold and they got the buckles and stuff. Yeah, much easier. Yeah, they're yeah. like a plastic boot yeah. type of skate. Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, that's perfect right. for somebody just okay. beginning. Yeah. 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 Like skated in slippers, never even tightened his skates. He hardly tightened his skates at all. And like you had good slippers on. Oh, okay. Are you, you running the show today? I'm running that till seven forty-five. Oh, I didn't know. I'm just I'm talking with Captain. So I don't want to talk. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I'm very good. Let's go. The boss is not here. Nobody's working. <laughs> <laughs> it's six thirty-one in Redfield. Please stand. So to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, Sean. I didn't have your phone on. I didn't know. I'm sorry, Steve. I'll wear my crown next time. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us virtually or in person today. First on the agenda is 24-108. That's the meeting minutes of February 26th meeting. I believe these do have some edits that uh, Catherine had suggested, grammatical uh, <coughs> and such beforehand. So Catherine type yeah. edits. Yeah. 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 Okay, so the packet ones are- Not the certificate type. No, I didn't see a packet. Do we have a motion? Oh. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Yes, it is. I'll second that. I have a first and a second. Any discussion? Yes. So on page two, um, where it talked about the fairgrounds project, what it said I brought up was really watered down and what I did bring up. Um, I brought up the fact that we hadn't talked about maintenance yet at the fairgrounds and that trees should not be planted, or I guess you're spending $30,000 on trees. Trees should not be planted where there are play spaces and parking areas because they require maintenance um, that we should have. Thank you. Um, open mode grass where kids can play. So that was my concern was maintenance and that no trees should be erected during in um, play spaces and parking spaces. So if that can be beefed up just a smidge. I, I see that it says Carol asked that everyone keeps in mind where trees are planted and being planted and how that will affect ongoing maintenance. Does that suffice? And I would suffice? like it to say, I don't, that trees should not be planted in play spaces and parking spaces. I was pretty firm on that. That was the whole point. Thank you. 
Any other discussion? All those in favor? And Catherine is absent. Excused, hey. right? <clears throat> <Yeah>. Excused, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 24109 warrants 37 and 38. I have Catherine's notes. Please don't ask detailed questions. <laughs> so, I have warrants 37 and 38 for the sum of $75,234.79. Catherine has uh, identified a uh, payment to Kuzno for $2,972.65 for the grinding and brushwork at the transfer station. Um, Reliance uh, equipment for $22,146.79. That's to the fire part department for two pump tests and a pump test and repair service fee. Uh, we have Scott Horn for $937. Uh, that was for plowing town properties when the town truck was not in operation. That town truck, uh, snowman group for $1,897.49 to the transfer station. Um, that was our, I have no idea actually what that says. In Catherine's notes, decals? Probably the uh, stickers for the oh, transfer station. The stickers, stickers. Yes. okay. Yep. That is the warrants as per Catherine's notes. I have a question. Do I have to make a motion first? Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion to accept <laughs> warrant 37, I think you said. And 38. And 38. And so Second. mentioned amounts. Second. 75 to 34, 79. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? What What did you say the um, 19,000 um for Reliance Equipment was? Uh, so that was to replace, uh, so two things. Reliance Equipment, they do the pump testing. Right. Um, in doing the testing, they had uh, identified an issue uh, that the department had um, identified and flagged for them uh, where they didn't seem to have proper pressure in one of the pumps. Um, the pump had to be replaced, so that was $19,000. Wow. So that's one reason why we have that uh, fire reserve because uh, if you get gravel in one of those things and the, and the seals go bad, uh, it is... Uh, uh, pretty hard to, to fix. So um, they had to replace that, unfortunately. So that's the price of one pump. Okay, just one a pump. capital reserve. And I thought, is it going to reserve or? It no, went it's coming out. No, it's coming <laughs> out. Yeah, it's, <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's yeah. Out. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Catherine is excused. Now we move on to town communications. Does anybody on the select board have anything they would like to discuss or say? I just mentioned there's a really cool article in the paper about the uh, Reedfield U, you know, and the age friendly committee done, has done a really good job of putting that together. Um, and Edmonds does a great, great job of that. So it's just a really cool thing. It's nice to get that kind of publicity, so. Sure it is. Um, I don't think this is elsewhere on the agenda. Um, but I had brought up the truck. That's not on the agenda tonight, right? Uh, no. Okay. No. And talked about if we purchase a truck for $65,000 um, and then we're going to sell what we had, there's a delay. So we would need a loan to cover the cost of the truck. Um, and I was saying, so once we sell the truck, and use the proceeds towards that purchase to decrease the loan that we can't just pay the extra 20,000 or whatever it amounted to. Upon which several people said you would wipe out that fund. But I'm looking at the budgets all over this agenda with millions of dollars in reserve undesignated. So can't, isn't it the job of the select board if we have um, a cost that we want to move funds to cover a cost of a truck, and we're not talking $600,000 fire truck, which of course would need a loan or a grant or whatever, we're talking $20,000. Isn't that the job of the select board to be able to move those funds to authorize the purchase and not give a dime to a bank for a loan? Isn't that what it's all uh, about? That, that um, is partially correct. So. Um, if it was designated funds, 
then yes, because those funds would have already been allocated and approved for use by the by the voters for the select board to to, to, to work with. Um, but for undesignated funds, the general fund, the general reserve, um, that is not accessible to the select board without voter approval. So um, the reason that, that we did approach this the way we did is because we had identified um, that limitation um, and we also identified the limitations in the existing designated funds. Um, and so the proposal came forward for the board to um, uh, purchase the truck and the upfitting uh, through the lease purchase agreement uh, and then have the, um, the, the, the sander and the plow and those other accessories um, purchased through the, the reserve so that we could use that fund and not have to finance it. Um, we also agreed uh, that, um, any funny, that any funds that came in would be applied towards that. Um, and so the terms we have right now with Andrew Scoggin Bank, um, uh, there's no prepayment penalty. We would pay down, pay down the principal and we would pay uh, whatever difference um, uh, over that period. Uh, and we would have... Um, a lower principal balance to, to be paying on. So um, that's the direction that I was given by the board. So I think that we've met that, um, but we can uh, certainly you know, look at it again if, if need be, but I, I think it's a very solid approach. So the, so the undesignated funds can't be touched unless voters approve it or the budget that's process approves it? That's correct, it? yep. But we didn't yeah. even talk about that this budget round, right? Which is unfortunate, because didn't we know this was like all going on? No, 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 we, um, um, and also wouldn't really, um, uh, uh, so what, what wasn't going on? I'm, I'm just, I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out what you're asking. So wasn't the, the truck identifying to be replaced and the purchase of it going on when we were doing all these budget talks? Uh, absolutely, and we could have but easily said, can we take this out of undesignated? Uh, we could have, but you didn't. That's the, the select board voted to do an action. So we did that action. Okay, I'm just saying going forward, this follows my mind of um, we have millions in reserve or undesignated or whatever you want to call it, but we're, we're financing things. I don't think families typically do that. It's like, how can we pay this down as fast as possible? And that's, I thought that was what we do is if something has to be purchased, we approve the expenditure. And that's, I've questioned that since I started on this board. And I don't know if it's gotten weirder with the new accounting methods we're using. Has that always been the I mean, uh, financing things like vehicles has pretty much always been the case. I mean, in, in most households finance cars, they don't pay cash. Um, but we have cash. But, but we, the town but we has don't, lots though. of cash. We, we don't, though, because it's already been um, either designated as undesignated, undesignated. And, and we can't get to it oh and, and there's a reason that it's there in that way is because we've gone through multiple budget processes and we've established that a certain portion of these funds are not intended for general use um, so those are there um, you know, really on a rolling basis and we're going to be using three hundred fifty thousand dollars out of that this fiscal year uh, in this current proposed budget which is a sizable allocation so um, it's not that people are just ignoring that money it's that it's being thoughtfully discussed uh, and and having differentiation made between reserves that are designated and, and the undesignated funds so um, i just don't want people to get the impression that, that we're just ignoring a lot of money that's sitting out there because it's there for a reason Anybody else have anything? Okay, staff communication, town manager's report. Okay, um, and I'm going to touch on the, the, the borrowing a little bit. So <laughs> we already we already sped through that a little. So uh, let's see. Um, I'll start with the treasurer's. Or did you say treasurer's or town manager? What I said town manager. Town first. manager. All right, perfect. Uh, so I'll start with administration and personnel. Um, the public hearing uh, for the special town meeting that was held. Uh, earlier or last month uh, did go well. Um, it was fairly lightly attended, but so was the actual um, the actual vote. Um, we had around 45 people attend. Um, so um, it was at the Kent Hill School. It went very smoothly. Um, it was a probably half an hour meeting, uh, and we did a voice vote, and uh, uh, two articles were approved. Um, about I'd say 80% in favor um, by voice vote. Um, it, might have been 75, but it was fairly strong in, in, in the affirmative for those. Um, and the planning board will take that up next. So, right, this is the, the first step was having the uh, applicants come to the planning board. Then it got moved to the select board, then to the town meeting. And now it goes back to the planning board so they can finalize this process. 
Um, and I think that's going to um, be moving fairly quickly. They've already taken some of the administrative steps to make sure the deeds are recorded um, or the, um, excuse me, the, um, uh, the, the change is recorded in the registry of deeds. So that's in process. Um, the town meeting is um, important and it's something that um, doing a, an on-floor town meeting every once in a while, I think is a good exercise, but I really wouldn't recommend doing it on, on the regular. I mean, um, these were sizable changes to the land use ordinance. Um, I think that we did the right thing by moving it forward to help those applicants and, and show that we were being uh, you know, positive, um, supporting the businesses that were before us. Um, but I think that the on-floor town meeting, um, it really is at this point in our trajectory as a municipality, a fairly you know, poorly attended. So um, I think it's a good tool, but it's again, one we want to use judiciously. That was just a point and something that I kind of noticed after watching that whole process play out. Um, the budget committee has discussed the overall budget um, and they've had, I think, two meetings since the, this board last met um, and they're generally satisfied. Uh, the impact of losing $62,000 in revenue sharing from the state of Maine was uh, painful uh, and hard to deal with. Uh, it caused some ripples for us, uh, but I think that uh, we came to a pretty good conclusion. Uh, we made some trade-offs um, and uh, the budget, again, will be discussed tonight. Uh, and then the warrant draft is in good shape. And I want to thank Teresa for her work uh, on the budget and also on the warrant because she does help put all that together uh, and make it um, so that I can go through it again. And um, we just work co collaboratively on that. Um, so that process went well. Um, as far as roads, traffic and parking, uh, the, the church road sidewalk, sidewalk public hearing last month also uh, was well advertised and well attended. Um, I think we probably had as many people at that second public hearing as we did at the, the town meeting. So I think we did a good job there um, and people had interest and they had great comments. Um, and we did bring some of those forward. Um, I, I have talked with the engineer about the possibility of reducing the number of speed tables. Um, there are definitely trade-offs there, but I think it, it is possible and it may make sense um, to keep um, the central crosswalk as a raised crosswalk and try other means that are less um, invasive and maybe less costly uh, to start with, we can always design our drainage in a way that would allow for those uh, uh, tables to be put in at a later time. So I think that's probably where we're looking at this point, but um, that was a good comment that came from, from a few folks uh, at that public hearing that we move forward. Um, and then the uh, other item on the church road, there's one other thing that I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, we've, we've heard from uh, Bill Drake a few times and he, uh, he put in some good ideas for us as well to, to consider. Um, we did um, uh, initiate the uh, request for public assistance. I mentioned that at the last meeting. Uh, for those who weren't there, uh, we did get a federal disaster declaration for the Kennebec County for that December storm. Um, but we keep getting storms that are almost as bad as that one. So. Um, uh, we, we keep losing material and losing things, but uh, we do have money coming. Uh, we are going to be following that process. Um, and I expect we should be able to get forty to $60,000 back uh, for outlays that we've made already to repair damage from that storm. So that's a positive thing. I also want to remind folks that private property may be eligible. So if you had a road that was access to your property that was washed out, um, you may be eligible for FEMA assistance to help pay, cover the cost of that. Um, and everybody knows the price of gravel is starting to get pretty crazy. So um, keep that in mind. Uh, the roads are suffering quite a bit. I mentioned those storms. Uh, this weekend we had quite a, quite a wash and um, uh, things that had started to ravel over the winter and through the thaw, uh, so several of them let go. Uh, we didn't lose any culverts. We did lose a little bit of pavement edge. Um, things could have been worse, but I, I think the work we've done over the last couple of years has helped, uh, but still um, uh, we just keep getting the big water and it keeps pushing us uh, into directions we don't wanna go. Um, let's see, the, uh, um, as far as the roads condition again, um, we are posted. Um, folks shouldn't be traveling on those roads with overweight vehicles unless they get permission. I have had to turn down permission um, for a few folks because of um, the fact that the roads were just too soft um, and the schedules couldn't work. Um, I do want to remind people, if it's frozen, if it's if it's 28 degrees and it's frozen and there's not water seeping out uh, at, at eight in the morning, you can travel on it. No, no issues there. So, um, uh, but but please be careful because I, we saw a big strip of um, of Morrill Road. Um, the, the pavement just collapsed right underneath uh, one of the one of the plow trucks, uh, and we had a long stretch where it's just 
it's taco. It looks like it took a plow through it. Uh, so um, there's water um, and there's freezing and it's, uh, it's a real concern. So um, you don't want to be liable for that. Maintenance, uh, we have a, pr a proposal from Anasaga Bank that does meet the direction of the select board. Um, five year term, um, the, the rate is 6%, so higher than I like, but we're also borrow, um, being paid at 5.5% for CDs. So you typically do see what they um, charge you being a little bit more than what they um, pay you. So that's not out of the realm of reason. Uh, and I believe that once we do get that truck sold, we'll be um, be able to knock that um, debt down by a fair amount uh, and have a much lower payments on that as we go forward. The uh, library project is moving uh, forward very quickly. We're nearly complete. I want to thank Ben, who's here, and Matt for all of their time up at that building. Um, those guys have done more scraping, painting, chipping, sanding, uh, carpentry, uh, drywall, uh, everything uh, than they probably ever imagined they would. Um, but uh, it's coming along very nicely. We're down to the last room. Uh, we have a little bit of plumbing work and then the electrical work. Um, those things should be very nearly complete this week. Uh, and I expect that by the end of next, we'll be fully done uh, with everything that we can be. Uh, transfer station, uh, Karen was a big help in working on that second draft of the uh, solid waste disposal ordinance. So I wanna thank her for that. And then the brush area, just like the roads are quite muddy. Um, so if you do bring in material, if you're able to do it um, Saturday morning uh, when things are frozen uh, or any morning when things are frozen, we appreciate that. Um, even let us know if, if, it's, if it's gonna be cold Thursday morning, um, uh, you know, give us a call. We, we, we might let you come in to drop it off because if we keep that place from getting mucked up, uh, we'd like to. So uh, that's my manager's report, Sean. I'm happy to take any questions. Anybody have any questions? Okay, ta uh, can we have the treasurer report, please? All right, uh, so I'll try to speed this one because February was pretty pretty quiet. Um, we did reconcile through the end of the month, one extra day than, uh, than other Februarys, uh, but um, everything looked good. Um, as far as investments go, we did uh, sw swap out that CDAR that had matured. Uh, we switched banks, we were able to get a like a 0.15% better rate with another bank. So we went with it. Um, but then we've also been wanting to um, kind of distribute, distribute some of our funds a little bit more evenly instead of having everything in one bank. Um, but uh, so we now have a $500,000 CDAR uh, through Northeast Bank at 5.3%. Uh, and that's for a six month term. So we'll actually uh, get, you know, a smaller yield than the 5.3, but um, that's just the way it works out. Uh, the audit uh, that's on the agenda for tonight. And, um, uh, we're, we're nearing completion. We have uh, received and approved the short report, which is the summary document. Uh, the full report will be coming out um, probably within within a couple of weeks, um, maybe maybe a month, the longest. But the short report is really the the, the first big step, uh, and that's done. And uh, as far as comments go, um, we should be about two thirds expended for the month, uh, for the year to date. Excuse me. Uh, we are seeing some positive signs. Things are starting to come back to life a little bit. Uh, transfer station revenues are up for the for the month and the year, so we're finally back on track with those. Um, those definitely should be up because we made increases in January um, to help offset costs that we're facing. Uh, so those are finally starting to show through. Uh, we are also seeing improvements to motor vehicle revenue, uh, and that's a big one for us. We, we budgeted uh, $600,000 600, uh, this year, and uh, it looks like we'll be if things carry on, on track to hit that. Um, and that'll be very positive for us because we, again, really need that revenue. And uh, maintenance expenses are um, showing higher than expected. Uh, that's in part because of the heavy equipment and building maintenance that we've kind of engaged in over this past year. Uh, some of it knowingly, some of it just, um, well, because of that truck. But um, one other thing that I should have mentioned in my other report um, is that we did find out today that we are going to be on the hook for a septic uh, tank and field replacement here at the town office. Uh, we've had some trouble the last couple uh, months and we thought it might've been due to the, all the water. Um, that was part of it, but we also have a tank that needs to be replaced in the field that's probably not in much better shape. So um, that's gonna be a 20, $20 to $25,000 hit uh, sometime this fiscal year because we do need to get that taken care of. So uh, that might change how we look at what we're budgeting for next year because uh, we had cut back a little bit on savings from municipal buildings, but um, with a big hit like that, we might want to look at um, you know, hedging our bets and putting some of that back in, but we can talk about that later. 
And uh, the other item I wanted to mention was that um, uh, the um, the road damage is, is escalating uh, and we're gonna have another probably five ten thousand dollar bill from this last storm uh, for work that has to get done um, some of it's going to come due later in the in the year um, because we can't do everything right now uh, but we're definitely going to have some patchwork to do um, and that's going to lead again to longer term work uh, some of it we're going to have to work with mount vernon on uh, because uh, we've got water coming in from from uh, their side of things that's making things uh, pretty rough over on sadie dunn road and fog road uh, but that's um that's something else uh, so otherwise, uh, most things are on track. I didn't see anything extraordinary, uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions for Eric? Anybody here online for boards, committees, commissions, and departments? <laughs> we do have minutes from the budget committee, the cemetery committee, the fairground working group, the library board of trustees, the planning board, and the special town meeting notes in the packet. Thank you everybody for submitting those on time. Public communication, anybody from the public online or in person looking to speak? Okay. So now we will enter into our workshop um, with our HR Smith. Can I make a motion to maybe let Nick move up? Ben or some of that discussion, if he's the only one here for one item like way far in the agenda. I don't know what Ben's here for off the top of my head, but um, the cemetery, the the cemetery stuff. final tree. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't see our folks from RHR here, Eric. So yeah, they might be a few minutes. Uh, yeah, let's do it. I had told him seven, but I'm gonna just confirm. Go ahead, go yeah, on. That's up, a good ben. idea. Yeah. Yep. Run, run, run Ben through. Yep. Running through. Not that way. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. I um, kind of uh, dwindled down the information from the uh, previous cemetery RFP uh, tabulation to list the totals of Stevenson Solutions for. The similar work that you can see below with Kensal Cemetery, Dudley Plain Cemetery, Case Cemetery, and East Refield Cemetery. And then in comparison with the total cost from Pool and Tree, Stevenson Solutions came out to 5,650 and Pool and Tree came to 6,400 and taking consideration of um, comments from the select board. In our last meeting, I proposed that Stevenson Solutions will be awarded the bid for fiscal year 2024 cemetery tree work. Thanks, Ben. Cool. Any questions for Ben? Good. We got a lot done last time. Cool. Kelsey. I have a question. Um, can I ask? I know when we assigned somebody as our roads company, and now like later in the agenda, we have somebody for to sweep the streets for three years. Can't we make this a commitment to Stevenson for multiple years, like three years? Reason being, if you went to someone like Andrew, he's kind of young and new, and when you're a contractor, you want to if you have all of these individual little projects, you don't want to say no. But if you have a commitment, like if you then have the town and you have a lot of work to do for the town, you may forgo some of those smaller customers where you know for the next three years, you might have a lot of work for the uh, town and you may not pick up some of those littler projects. I'm just saying it seems Stevenson's has been with us for a few years, I understand. Mm -hmm. It looks like they are, their pricing is fair. Um, if they're a good contractor, can't we give them, like, a, it seemed like a lot of work to run around and look at all these trees to bid on it too, mm -hmm. for each of these contractors. And I love what Steve said last year, or excuse me, two weeks ago in the last meeting that if we have a contractor, we should be um, somewhat dedicated to that contractor unless they start doing not a good job or start being very pricey. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe we, is it possible to make a commitment for like say three years for our, uh, our tree work? I think that would be a, a potential option. And I would be, um, uh, I would ask Eric to put in his uh, opinion on the matter. What does allow us with doing an RFP every year is that flexibility 
And, you know, through my work in the cemeteries, mowing, weed whacking, scheduling interments, I keep a lookout on trees that need to be worked on. So this provides us that flexibility where I can't necessarily tell um, a contracted arborist what exactly my expectations are for work because it changes from one year to another. In the past few years, we have had quite a bit of work, especially in Huntoon Cemetery, uh, doing a fairly significant amount of work in Kensal Cemetery a few years ago. Um, it's just kind of difficult um, with that nature of work, but it could be something to be looked into. I think there has been members on the cemetery committee that have discussed that as a potential option to reduce the time needed to go about um, this process, but it does allow us the flexibility. It does allow us the potential to find uh, potentially lower cost options if they would arise. It does appear over the years that Seaman Solutions has been the most affordable option for us to carry out the most work. So it, it, it's sort of balancing out the benefits of uh, the diminished time needed to go through this process, um, but possibly uh, lessening our flexibility to find uh, more affordable options potentially and the, the need that may change over time with the amount of work needed to be done in the cemeteries. Eric, can you chime in about any legalities we may have based on the RFP process and um, process? Yeah, I mean, you certainly could do a multi-year contract. We do it for certain services. Um, it's more common for a fixed, um, fixed definition of scope. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the sweeping is the sweeping. It, it's a per, um, per hour, per mile. Um, same thing with like striping. It's always, um, you know, typically, um, but even striping we put out every year. Um, I think we can go either way with it. Um, one uh, option would be to just have uh, things switched over to an hourly. Um, but then with hourly, you always run the risk of um, if someone's got a, a multi-year hourly contract, then they might not be as efficient. Um, but that's that's just a, a common um, uh, decision you have to make when issuing contracts and RFPs. Um, I'd, I'd ask Dave about his thoughts on it. I mean, I don't know how common it is in the field to get a multi-year, but uh, I'm sure there are businesses, uh, especially ones that, you know, like dentists and stuff that just say, hey, you're my guy. I'm the yeah. I, I would agree with you on that, Eric, for the sole purpose that, like you said, uh, the sweeping is, the, you know, you know what you're going to do. So you're contracting it for three years. This is such a changing, evolving mm -hmm. thing, job to job. It's It, it, it would be a to me, a difficult thing to, to nail down on a contract sense. basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might be years you don't even need to do anything. So mm -hmm. uh, you're signing a contract to, for nothing. nothing. <laughs> and I've been really appreciative of the cemetery committee um, and the select board and their willingness over the past few years to uh, carry out some fairly extensive work in the cemetery. So I, I think we are getting to a point where we have addressed many of the extraordinarily old trees. There are still some remaining, especially in East Reedfield and Reedfield Corner, and there's always unexpected trees that may come down, um, but we are um, kind of limiting those number of trees that I see as, in, in my limited uh, knowledge and understanding, as uh, potential hazards and shifting towards, you know, replanting in some areas, of course, trees that wouldn't grow as tall and whatnot, um, but we are, in my uh as I mentioned, limited understanding, reaching a point where we aren't addressing as many as many trees, especially large trees that, of course, um, garner the, the largest prices to take them down and to do so in a safer manner. I guess the, the good part is we've got two really good guys that are reasonable and mm -hmm. do a good job and they're local or right next door. So that's, Most certainly. that's a big plus. So when the, you did you, you gave a recommendation? Yes, a recommendation okay, right, yeah. for the, the lowest cost, which is uh, Stevens and Solutions for the work uh, listed out in those various cemeteries. So I'll make a motion to uh, award the art tree, cemetery tree RP to Stevens and Solutions for some of $5,650 for the trees mentioned. Second. <clears throat> a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Catherine's excused. Thank you, Ben, for your work on this. Thank you kindly, everybody. Thank you, Thanks, Have a great night. Thank you, Carol, for reminding us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, save, we'll save you a few. Oh, thank you, thank you. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night. Everybody. You too. Okay, Eric, how'd you make out with our workshop?
Uh, I sent an email, um, but I haven't seen anything come back. So um, I think that, um, uh, that the best thing to do will be to just uh, move along in the agenda and see if we have any participation later on. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to reschedule. Okay. Item 24043, uh, consider an update to the fairgrounds project. Steve? So we, uh, the working committee met last Thursday and uh, the main purpose was to review the articles um, for the warrant. Eric had those prepared for us. There's one that is basically like the boilerplate language that you need to apply for the LWCF grant. We didn't change that. Um, and there's another one that just talked about um, you know, approving the, the warrant. We did, we did ask him to look, to make sure that there's some language in there about not, uh, you know, since it's in the LWCF grant, um, the matching funds um, have to come from non-federal sources since it's a federal grant, but the word state fund was in there also. So we asked that to be taken out because that's not prohibited. If there was some kind of state funding that we could get, we would be able to do that. So I think you took that out of there. Out of that, so uh, there were two parts. One, yeah. two, there were the articles, but there was also the uh, commitment after right. the fact. So um, that commitment, we we did uh, make that change. We also, I made some changes to the articles about, um, in fact, even though we had already um, voted last year to say, we're going to do the project, we're not going to spend any um, uh, you know, tax dollars on it. Um, we reiterated that point. That yeah, the we asked that that be in there again to make sure people were clear about that. Yeah. So that seemed important. So yeah. I'm glad you guys recommended that. And so, and then we talked about the transition to fundraising and several of the folks on the working committee are gluttons for punishment and they want to volunteer to do the fundraising as well. And um, we're also going to try to involve some other folks with that, but it's not going to be a function of the, this particular committee. Um, and the, one other thing is one of the um, committee members had asked last time about the possibility of excluding a, a parcel of some size, like an acre or a little over or something like that um, from the LWCF grant um, to allow the possibility of building something there in the future. Kind of nebulous about what that might be, right? He said, you know, it could be a community center, it could be other things, but the committee decided um, in pretty short order that, because we got advice from Jerry, he talked to the folks about the LWCF um, for, who manage for the state. And what they were saying is that the, the grant um, requires that the land that's set aside is used primarily for outdoor recreation. So you could set aside an acre, let's say in case we wanted to build a community center or something like that. But the other issue is that anything that is in the um, LWCF grant has to be dedicated to outdoor recreation. So for example, let's say you set aside an acre and you want to build a community center there, um, you would also have to build a separate parking lot because the parking lot is designated for the outdoor activities, right? Um, you, you couldn't use the same parking lot. So it would be quite complicated um, to, to do that. And um, we didn't feel like we're in the position that that would be the way forward. So we decided not to set that, pull that aside. Would that prohibit building, say, a concession no, stand? Awesome question. We asked that exact question. And the no, it would not. That... Anything that's dedicated to outdoor recreation, right. like the concession stand for the ball field, it's fine. It like that, okay, all the, it's a, it, only if you could even have a classroom. Right. Yeah. That yeah. was for outdoor recreation okay. spot. As long as it's and tied it, directly to exactly. as long as it's tied to the outdoor okay. recreation. The only thing we just couldn't have an indoor of some other right. type. Like no bowling alleys or roller okay. skate rinks or stuff like that. Yeah. I have a question um, that has to do with the fundraising and the grants and the allocation of all those resources to the different parts of the project. Have you guys discussed how things are going to be allocated for the different phases as to different sections of the fairgrounds or someone makes a donation and they want to support one part of the project have you guys discussed that at all we we didn't get into the specifics of fundraising yet Carol. we figured that's going to be the After folks the, vote? the next committee yep no okay. good question so the committee is but... still around but we're, we're around but, but we're not, not we're not planning not on continuing planning. this okay. that committee so no. after the vote and more discussions going on with the fairgrounds where's where does that come from or do you start a new committee? That, well, wait, what do you, I guess it depends on what, for what purpose. So as of right now, there are some individuals that are 
interested in continuing to work on helping with the fundraising efforts, but I, I don't think we've ever thought of it other than just the project itself. You know, so if the project estimate right now is at a million dollars, give or take thirty thousand dollars, if the LWCF, LWCF yeah. can do fifty percent of that, then we need to find fifty percent in kind or 50% match and what do, what does that estimate to? So really we'll be looking at what kind of supports we can get for that, be it in-kind work, donations, other entities that might front different things. But we haven't looked at it to say like, I would donate a hundred bucks to the parking lot, you know, it's it just the project in general. I, I think a big, a big thing that is gonna be what we can get for in-kind work. You know, like um, Greg Leinbach been great about contacting the National Guard and, you know, and that would be a giant step. If, if they agreed to come out and do the, the drainage work and do a lot of the excavation, that would make a huge difference. So, you know, look, there's a lot of stuff out there that's kind of, well, you know, we pretty hard to really determine yet what the needs are going to be. It's because there's some big questions like that that could be like game changers one way or another. But the, the money part is going to be a big issue, I think, down the road. Oh, and absolutely. so what I'm saying is people were so passionate about the softball field. That's what started this. Someone says, I want $500 to go to softball. Um, they should be able to do that. Well, I can't imagine so, they wouldn't be. Okay, that's right? what I'm but, saying, is if there's know, something that you guys have discussed we, that we they can We have not give. discussed that. Okay. Like I said, we're going to have a, that's going to be a separate committee that's going to handle the, the fundraising. Okay. Yeah. One, one thought on that, though, just from uh, the folks that are going to have to be managing and taking in and tracking all those funds. I would think that if we had people wanting to do a designated, dedicated donation, that maybe we set a minimum threshold for those type of donations, um, just to make it easier to manage. I don't, um, I but, don't. So like if someone said, so. I, I'd like to, 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 to donate $10 and make sure it goes to the softball field, right? On a million dollar project, that's a lot of paperwork pushing around to take little, little donations like that and put them all into separate little chunks. You know what? If a little kid wants to have a lemonade stand and give $25 to the softball field, I put a little line item in there. I don't think that's a minimum threshold. If, if a resident a wants suggestion. to donate anything, okay, yeah. I mean, it, it's manageable. Yeah. Just saying. Okay. Here we are. I'm done with that. Thank you, Steve. No and really thanks to that group for their continued work and you know all they've done to now and jerry has agreed to maintain and assist with the writing of the grant jerry, jerry has agreed is, to write the lavcf grant which is a big deal it's a giant deal yeah because he knows a lot about it and it's a big job and he's willing to do it so we owe him a big thing yeah Okay, item 24044 consider an update on the church road sidewalk project Okay, I gave most of that during my um, manager's report, but um, I will add uh, that, um, that we have been, uh, since that meeting, um, I did submit a, a, a second quarterly um, uh, reimbursement request from the state. So we are continuing to submit re reimbursement requests and we are continuing to get funds back uh, at that 80% match. So um, uh, we, we've uh, gone through that process three, three times now, I think. So um, we're getting comfortable with it and uh, that makes it easier to go forward when the dollar amounts get bigger um, to know that we have a mechanism and a process in place that can turn that around quickly and get that money back in our bank account, uh, which is where we want it. Um, the, um, uh, bless you, bless you. Uh, the folks that have um, uh, been helping us on at MDOT. Um, we also spoke with them after the hearing. Um, uh, he wasn't able to make it because uh, of a personal uh, emergency, but um, he um, he did watch the video uh, and we did uh, communicate about um, what the state of Maine saw as um, you know priorities and things that were practical and things that were impractical. So um, overall, I think that we're in a very good shape. Um, they did question the viability of, of trying to save that uh, small section of rock wall um, right by the entrance. Um, and I was by that again today. And um, I kind of agree. Uh, we can talk about it more, but um, there doesn't seem to be much of a structure there anymore. Um, it's been knocked over and pushed aside. So um, the effort of moving a pile of stones one place to the next might not be worth it, um, uh, given the cost. So um, 
we did hear that uh, concern, but um, at this point, it's becoming one of those ones that's less likely uh, because of the cost relative to the benefit. Uh, the other thing that we did talk about, and I mentioned earlier, was the um, speed tables. Uh, and, and that does seem like a viable um, uh, measure that would um, reduce the overall impact on vehicles, uh, for better or for worse, uh, and, but definitely would reduce the cost of the project um, you know, by you know, maybe up to upwards of 50,000, depending um, on how it works out. Some of that might be lost in having to rearrange some of the drainage, but uh, to me, it does make sense to look at that uh, and to just have that one speed table and give people the benefit of the doubt for a little while and see, see how they do uh, with, with, um, with not uh, racing over pedestrians. Um, but yeah, I think I, I, overall, I really do appreciate all the feedback we got um, and we're gonna continue to work on this. Uh, and uh, effectively, um, we'll be making a few more changes, uh, and then uh, we will be presenting a, a version of this plan that's on the wall behind us um, uh, as part of that town meeting vote. So we are going to have an attachment that shows, here's, here's what it's going to look like. It will be similar to the fairgrounds plan. It won't be final, but it will be you know, things will be effectively where they're going to be. Um, and we will have to do a, you know, a fair amount of work to get the fine details taken care of. So I just want to point that out with both of those items that um, we might be getting into the warrant discussion a little bit, but those are really 50% plans when you look at it because they haven't done all the fine tuning. They haven't done all the detail, but, but we generally know where things are going to go. So um, that's, that's really it for now. Um, uh, again, I keep getting, uh, Bill always sends me an email every couple of weeks about his new ideas and it's always fun to, uh, to see what he comes up with. So um, I do appreciate the ongoing public feedback and, uh, and that's it for the, uh, the church road sidewalk. I have a, two things. Um, I know we haven't talked about bike paths and we don't have room for a bike path, but I'm gonna rain on um, Bill's recommendation that the speed tables or speed bumps go all the way to like the curving. He was saying, I don't want, cars swerving around that sweet bump and getting up, you know, around it. But if we can leave the path at least enough for a bike to go through, I don't think you want bikes to be going. Um, so if you're a kid or not. what? Depends if you're a kid or not. <laughs> well, right, right. And if a car wants to swerve around it, well, you know, you're a fool, but go for it. But I think as you know, if we can keep the sides, um, open for bike traffic, that would be good instead of all the way to the ends, which is what he recommended. And I think the, the speed bump that is the most, I guess my least favorite is the speed table, like where people are gonna be walking. I think to raise where people are going to be going across, again, with bikes and with baby carriages, Bill keeps talking about baby carriages going down church road on the side of the road. Um, and maybe in dusk, that's the one that I didn't understand. You have the flashing light coming from Church Road. You can be where the speed table is um, suggested by the Union Meeting House. And I know you can see the flashing light because I've walked it. The one that might be the most important is coming from the opposite end, approaching the fairgrounds from away, where we want them to be aware of a lower speed um, and approaching, you know, where the activity and cars are coming in and out. But that speed table is probably the most expensive. It also already has the flashing light and having the raised area where people are crossing in various ways seemed to be the one that maybe was the least needed. I just, I didn't, I've never seen a crosswalk that's a raised one. So I didn't know where that idea came from. Uh, well, I mean, they're fairly common. And from a design perspective, that was the most important one, um, at least just from talking with the engineers. Um, where, where? Where have you seen one? I, I mean, you go to a, a, a lot of cities. They Brunswick. have Brunswick. Um, I know they have them in uh, Portland. Um, I'm not saying that. Um, uh, so, so part of this is that we are designing this to federal safety standards. Um, so the fact that we have federal dollars going into this um, is part of the reason why we have enhanced safety. I mean, yeah, you can get away without it. Um, but I'm not sure that we would be allowed to A, under the federal funding, um, or B, that we would want to because it does seem like traffic calming is one of the priorities of putting this whole thing in. Um, and so um, having at least one raised element uh, is fairly important. But I mean, I'll, I'll leave that one for the engineers. I'll certainly pass the suggestion along, but um, I don't believe they would find much uh, favor in, in taking out the raised crosswalk. Um, 
Anything else? Okay, Ron Smith is, I'm guessing that's RHR Smith. That's RHR. Okay. Oh, there he is. You guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. yes. So Eric, how do you how do you want to start this? You want me to share my screen and you know kind of you know go over where when we were all in that room the last time I was there and kind of what's been done at the town and and uh, you know and, and and the result of like this year you know really some of the the the, the changes with setting up these reserve funds. How do you want to start it? Well, that sounds great, but I'll start by introducing you. This is uh, Ron Smith. Uh, he is uh, the principal of RHR Smith. And um, he's been our auditor uh, and his firm has been our auditor for a number of years now. Um, and we've been, I guess I'll say, very happy with the results. We appreciate them working with us through um, some, some recommendations and some changes that have not always been easy for Teresa and I to navigate. So um, I'll just start with a welcome and a thank you. Um, and then I'll turn it over to you to, to run through the, uh, the summary. Sure. So, so how about I go back into the room? I don't, I don't know, Eric, who's there from the last time I was there, you know, last spring to, you know, to like right now. But how about I just go back in time to like get up to today? How does that sound? That sounds great. Yeah. So, so, so last year, as you all recall, you know, when, when we did the 22 audit for refill, one of the recommendations that we made is all your funds were virtually pooled. What do I mean by that? Your general fund, your special revenue funds, your capital reserve fund, they were in one pool. And what we said, you know, what we've been saying for a while, what we said last year is we should probably start the process to segregate all your reserve funds, you know, whether they were special reserve funds or capital reserve funds from your general fund, you know, from your general fund and basically have your books reflect the separate various businesses and pots of money that you do in general government, special revenue reserve account, and then capital reserve accounts. And I believe Kathy from our office came up, you all, sometime in, in, we'll say early fall, you know, after we did our presentation to, you know, to, to really kind of set your books up in a way, you know, to, to, to illustrate fund accounting and pull all the reserve funds out of your general fund. And, and, and I'm kind of going to illustrate is, is if you all can share my, see my screen here, just bear with me. Can you all see my screen here right now? There it is. Okay. So I'm going to go back in time. And one of the things that we did last year is, like, can everybody see where I've got my cursor on? This is 630.22, you all. Can everybody see where that cursor is? Yes. That million $1,791,000 actually was funds that resided in your general fund you know, on 6-30-22. And what we did is we actually moved those balances as of 6-30-22 over into the various capital reserve funds and the special revenue reserve funds on your books. The activity for 23 is still showing in your general fund this year. Why? Because we didn't get up there until after we had that conversation. Kathy didn't set the books up you know, where all the expenses, which typically were budgeted for for capital and reserves out of your general fund, still reside in your general fund. But in this year, 23-24, not only will the activity reside in these special columns, and I'll show you kind of the after effect of this thing, all the activity will reside in 23-24. And that's going to match and really kind of correspond with all the equity now that was tied up in your general fund and that we physically within your books have moved that to really kind of reflect true fund accounting for the town of Reedfield that I know it's been discussed, you know, there for some time. So now when we look at your general fund, your special revenue funds and capital projects funds, this equity that was established last year and moved out of your general fund, you know, pool, now that's sitting in its separate home, which is really where I'm going to pick this story up right now, you guys, on June 30, 2023, okay? And, and here's really where the story starts, okay? Last year, you know, so, so this year, last year, this column, if you, if you were to go any year prior to June 30, 22, 
all your reserves, all your capital projects fund, all resided in this column, your general fund. Last year, we set up the special revenue funds and capital reserve funds, as I just showed you with that million, that million seven transfer into all the reserve funds. And we moved it. We moved it. And, and we moved it, just bear with me, to really here's where the story starts, you know, from last year. This million seven that you guys can see in your special revenue funds and that capital reserve funds is going to math to that transfer out that where that money always historically resided in your general fund, it got transferred to your um, uh, special revenue reserve funds and your capital reserve funds, you know, within the town. So there's the million seven getting moved. And really kind of here was the wishes of your 2023 town meeting, you know, that you had, you know, with, with the money that was budgeted and moved in, you know, and then the money that was moved out to show in your general fund, because that's the way you budgeted in 23. We couldn't change your budget in 23. It was too late. You went to town meeting, kind of what you guys did in 22 happened in 23. So really kind of the first first, um, you know, glimpse you're going to have to see is June 30th of 24. And here's what I mean by that. Just bear with me, you all. These are actual expenses that everybody can kind of see, you know, June 30, 23. This is based upon your budget and really kind of reality, what happened last year. All your capital expenses are shown in your general fund. Everybody kind of see where I'm putting that cursor on that $411,000 right there. That all mimics your budget for 630-23. On 630-24 now for the first time, Real Greenfield is gonna move, at a, it's gonna move this entire fund, you all, of $473,000 of capital projects. And it's now going to be moved, you all, to right here under these, under these two first two funds, special revenue reserves and your capital projects reserve. All the expenses will land in here. So it will actually show in your general fund what the true cost of running general government is. It will show in your special revenue funds what the true cost of the reserve funds that you've budgeted for and spent out of. And the same for capital reserve funds, you all. It'll show what you not only budgeted to transfer to capital reserve funds, these expenses, you know, for the uh, for the capital reserve funds of $473,000 will actually reside in your capital reserve funds. So this, this, when you get down to the total this year, because again, we couldn't change the way you budgeted, you know, these actual expenditures are going to drop because they have capital expenditures in that are going to reside in a capital expenditure column. OK, so the only thing for actual expenditures you're going to have is your general government warrant articles of all the other, you know, of all the other categories that you go to town meeting and, you know, and ask the people for approval. We're truly now separating general government from special reserves and capital reserves. And that process has been kind of a two year process to, you know, to kind of, you know, show that right now. And, and 24 will be the first year that your books are set up to actually show the true capital expenses, you know, in there that we, you know, for lack of a better word, restructured and worked with you all to restructure your chart of accounts to better reflect general government, special revenues, capital projects. And that's, I know, I'm sure is about as, as clear as mud. You know, but uh, that's the best way I could kind of, you know, say that we really dissected the books for the town of Reedfield to really show the various acts, aspects of government and your books now in 24 and actually 23, really, you know, really are showing the first, you know, um, sign of the segregation of these funds. And and here's where I'm going to start the story. But before I do. You know, I, I, I'm just, uh, again, I just had that conversation to kind of bring you back to that meeting that we had in the room, kind of talking about what we were going to do and how we were going to do it. And I can say we worked with uh, Eric and Teresa to do that. 
you know, this past year and 24's audit will be the first indicative, you know, way to kind of reflect all of that math, you know, revenues, expenses, you know, what's been budgeted in these various funds now that have been set up, you know, post July 1, 2023. So, so, so. Eric, I, I know that that was, you know, kind of like a before and after effect. That was kind of the best way I can kind of show you where you guys were, you know, where we started last year, Eric, and where we kind of ended, you know, in 2023 and really kind of the direction where we're going right now, because all your reserve funds, as you can see now, have all been pulled out of your general fund, you know, forever going forward. And now your books are set up in a way to reflect that. Yeah, and that's great, Ron, and that's what we had asked for, and it, it's uh, fairly clear um, to me, and uh, I hope, hope most folks here. Uh, but, I mean, you, you nailed a few things. Uh, we're in a transition period. This, this audit um, reflects part of that transition, um, and, uh, but you can clearly see where we're headed. So I think that, that all, all those things are, are right. And, uh, and it really kind of gets into the crux of the conversation now is now we're just looking at general fund money right there, you guys. There's no co-mingling of reserve money. There's no co-mingling of, of capital reserve money. That all now resides on your books and on the audit report starting in 22, carried on in 23 is the, as I call it, the transition year. This $2 million is strictly general fund balance for the, for the town. Doesn't include your reserves and, and, and it stands alone. And it really kind of stacks the story, you know, based upon a seven million dollar budget, you know, ish in in read build on really kind of well, well, what's that mean? What's that reflective of? We like to see a 30, 60, 90 days of your general fund operating budget. OK, and that's about seven million dollars, which includes a big part of it, you know, more than half or about half of education, 30, 60, 90 days puts you at somewhere around $560,000 at 30 days, a million 120 and about 1.7, 1.8 for that 90 days, which is a little higher. And typically where we're seeing government at you all, we do two thirds of all the municipalities in the state and our, our target balance is 60 days. We like to see 60 days of your operating budget sitting in reserve. Good news is, is uh, Reed Field's got about a hundred days sitting in its reserve. But I believe out of some of that, Eric, you actually used some of that for tax relief in FY24, correct? Yeah, we, we did. And we're going to use some again. Uh, so we're going to exactly. continue to draw that down. We also have, um, you know, $300,000 in road expenses that haven't hit yeah. yet. So yeah, yeah and, we're, and Eric, we're working and, on it. <laughs> yeah. And just so I'm clear, I think you used about $250,000 last audit. I think it's going to be about the same for, the, for, for this year was the expectation for Reed Field to kind of commit another quarter of a million dollars for tax relief? Yeah, I think we were actually closer to three. Um, okay. So we did increase that based on last year's statement that we were a little high, so. So in a perfect world, you guys, with all the transfers, where they're landing, we'll do kind of a mini audit with Teresa and Eric just to make sure we got all the math right with FY24 and all the monies where it needs to be to come up through with the reserves. Out of that $2 million right now, if you guys use three 300,000, you're down to 90 days of surplus, you all, if you actually end up using that, you know, and we really don't want to see you go below that, that, that number right now, you know, but typically, you know, as I, as I say to municipalities, you know, um, I'm not sure what reality looks like. I'm not sure really kind of, you know, what, 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 as we come out of this pandemic still really kind of, you know, what the math looks like, but here's what I'm telling you. We're starting to see general fund balances for government, municipalities and schools stabilize. They're not growing, you know, as we're kind of getting back to whatever normality looks like in the world of government. So I think that your surplus, your fund balance right now, and you guys kind of using that $250,000, $300,000 to mitigate and use some for tax relief, you know, I think that that puts you with that two fifty, three hundred thousand. dollars $300,000 right about where you want to land every year with a general fund balance carryover of 90 days. And if history holds suit for, for refield, you would be using that money this year. It's going to put you right around that 90 day, days as I look into the crystal ball, you know, on June 30, 2024. It's going to put you right there again, you all, you know, on June 30, 2024. And if you're going to use road money, 
you know, if you're going to use capital reserve money, you know, and, 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 and that's a, a calculated plan spend down as I refer to it as, you know, and you're going to take that. Are you going to put it back? Because the only place you're going to be able to put it back from are two alternatives is to raise taxes to put it back or to move some of that general fund balance, which I think probably is the is the better option for the town is to look at its 90 days of surplus and really kind of see, you know, how much of that more you're going to need for, you know, for a road for, for a road improvement plan and road maintenance, you know, and I would probably think about moving some of that here you know, in this budget cycle, Eric, which it sounds like you guys are talking about right now, so. Yeah, we are. Um, well, no, so, so that, that's all, all good uh, information and, and, and comment, Ron. Um, and, and I do think that uh, having um, those things separated out will make it easy for, easier for us to budget for all of our needs, um, but, pr yeah. but for, primarily for our operating budget, that's gonna be a lot easier. Um, and, I, and I do think that we've had some um, challenges around uh, knowing what exactly uh, would be included in our calculation for our, we, we right now have a, a technically a 212 or 212s policy, one sixth policy. Um, but I, yeah. I do feel, especially with the current environment that we're in, um, that, that 90 days is healthier and probably where I'd like to be. Uh, but um, certainly the board might might want to take a different approach. So yeah, and, and whatever that approach is, we're more than welcome to be here as your guys' sounding board. I am telling you the approach right now typically is in that 60 to 90 day benchmark you all for, you know, in the in the municipal world is where the governments are are wanting to land. And here's why they want to land there. The state's got $2.5 million of Build Back America great again in infrastructure money to get down to the localities. You know what? What the delay is that 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 money was actually appropriated by Congress in in November of 21, and we're just now starting to see it trickle through various bonds. You know the bond bank programs, water, wastewater, clean water, things like that through various programs right now. And the state right now is, for lack of a better word, trying to spend all the ARPA funds that still exist in the local level because on December 31st, 24. Those ARPA funds have to be spent or committed. And there's a whole definition to define what committed means. So, so imagine this, the state still has a significant amount of ARPA funds that need to be spent and drawn down in the world of local government by December 31st, 2024. They're really dragging their feet on releasing this infrastructure money there until the second round of COVID relief funds and these APA funds is gone. But, I, but I'm, I'm confident as I'm starting to see and have conversations out there in our network and, you know, with various banks and various funding agencies and various people at Maine Municipal Association, you know, out there, various people at the state. You know, is once I think that that path this fall kind of dictates that this APA fund dries out, you're going to start seeing a movement now with the second round of third round of COVID relief funds in the form of infrastructure making its way to local government, roads, water, wastewater, three of the biggest areas that they're trying to attack you guys right now. So, you know, one thing that I found helpful is that your treasurer report, you've been trying to use some of this accounting method in your delivery of that information. So it doesn't all sound French, but you know, still it was so hard. It would, and, and I really appreciate that with uh, with Eric's treasurer's report. It's really hard to explain. It's easier to show you. And kind of if we went back to 21 and that was really kind of my thought process is to really kind of mimic that with some of the information you all are getting here right now so that your books are reflective and that treasure reports are reflective so that you can really follow along with this report. That's the highlight, you guys, of where you financially scan and read field. You know, at uh, at June 30, 23, we're trying to find out where you stand now currently. We're actually in the process of doing pre-audits for 24. You've got a long report coming like any time. We're just backed up and buried, but it's going to be reflective, you know, of this. You know, but uh, we wanted to get in a room sooner than we did last year. It's kind of like you were, you know, I think at the at the end, if not through your budget process last year when I came up and, you know, and did a presentation and, 
you know, I know Eric wanted to get in a room tonight to just kind of give you the lay of the land financially on where you guys stand. And I think you guys stand great financially. I really do. So. Any questions from the board? Carol? I'm not really sure what to ask, but I'll start with this. Um, my biggest question is our look at the budget going to be less detailed than we see right here? They, they were saying this is moving here and that's moving there and we're consolidating. Is it going to be all spelled out and itemized like it is right here? Or less detailed? You asking, I'm sorry, are you asking me that question? Anybody. <laughs> Eric, do you want to take it or do you want me to? Uh, well, if I, if, I, if I understand the question correctly, um, uh, our, our look at the budget is as detailed as it needs to be. Um, we have... Mm -hmm. Um, uh, typically the audit is, is a summary of all of the activity. Our financial reporting, um, we can show every dollar spent. Um, there's always a balance between how much we show uh, and discuss at any given meeting at any given level. Um, but at this point in the process, um, we typically focus more on, um, uh, I'd say, expenditures and revenues that are uh, a little bit more detailed than what you see in, in this um, uh, ge general um, short report, um, but uh, not as detailed as what we would discuss at the budget committee meetings where all the departments come and present and we talk about postage stamps and, um, uh, you know, what, how much gravel we're going to get for the roads and things like that. So like um, what we're seeing here with capital improvements and it's very itemized going forward, it's going to stay like that? Or it's going to get yeah. less detailed. Are you talking about the budget or the here. audit? What I'm seeing here, the the this is the um, audit. June, you know, the ending June 30. What I'm what I'm looking at right here. Oh, the audit. Is it yeah. going to stay so, this detailed? Uh, so, so we, this is the short report. So this is a, a condensed version. What we will be getting is a um, uh, a, a long form, the full audit, um, in probably less than a month, um, and that will have more detail and more backing information about uh, where uh, some of those- I the uh, question though. Came. Eric, as I understand the question, I think the question's being asked is when we see this level of detail, continued level of detail by the various capital items in the town, which kind of mimics your budget right there. Is, 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 am I understanding the question right? Absolutely. And, 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 and I can 100% say you will not lose this level of detail. It will forever be maintained going forward in your audit report, which will now mimic your books. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's why he gets paid, you know, the big <laughs> I just, I like seeing the breakdown and they were saying this is moving and that's moving and capital, and I was, as long as we can kind of see it, it was laid out like that. And, that, and that really, that breakdown allows us to make sure that all the money ends up where it needs to end up. So that, that, that really is the best way I can say it. And, and we would not compromise this level of detail. That will forever be in there. We just want it to be reflective of the math in your books that you guys are being provided. So. Thank you. Anybody else? Thanks for joining us tonight. Look forward to seeing, Thanks. I'm sure- Thanks for having me. Eric, I'll find you and Teresa, you know, over the next week ish here so we can kind of move into phase three with 24, you know, with, uh, you know, with the books. So that's excellent. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting, uh, getting moving on the pre audit uh, discussions as well. So thanks. Thanks as always. Eric, it'll probably, it'll probably be Kathy again. You know, it's just the logical choice, just FYI. So. Hey, great. Okay. Thanks, all. Everybody be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. That was as painful as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Okay, back to old business, 24047, select board action item reporting. Does anybody have anything? Nope. Nope. I guess I just have one thing I forgot to mention last week. I want to mention this time, and that is that I did walk the school trails with Rob Peel and several other members of the trails committee, um, just looking to see how they could make some of the trails, existing trails on the, on the school property blend in with the trails that we maintain on, on our land and on fairgrounds and also um, see what kind of work might be necessary to make those trails more accessible for people. There's some bridges that are, you know, were put in by students a long time ago now that are no longer bridges. They're just sticks in the water, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> and so we just, what we did a long walk, probably spent an hour and a half just out cruising around, looking at what's possible and, um, 
there's just some excitement from the trail committee folks and you know the the school is also you know i think very on board with that um if the trails committee wants to spend some time you know trying to make the school trails a little more um accessible and better maintained then the school's up for that that's for sure the school doesn't do a great job of that thanks steve Okay, item 24090, consider a draft fiscal year 2025 budget and June 11, 24 town meeting warrant. Eric. Okay, so I wanted to ask before we did that, did you want me to go right into that or do you want to have cake first? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, hmm. that's a dangerous question. <laughs> Well, I came to... just for cake, so why don't we do cake now? <laughs> yeah. Let's take a break after the auditor, and then we can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so um, yeah, just a, a background on this. Um, uh, March 11th is the date that Reed Field was incorporated. Um, and we've, as far as I've been here, um, I don't believe we've ever had a meeting, a select board meeting on March 11th. So I thought it'd be cool to have a have a cake. Um, so we uh, got a cake from Grant's Bakery uh, in Lewiston. It's got the, the town seal on it. Um, and uh, I, I just thought it'd be cool to, to think about the town and talk about it a little bit um, and eat some cake. Um, and I, I said this to the board, but um, when, when Reedfield was incorporated 233 years ago, um, George Washington was president and Vermont was the first state outside of the 13 original colonies to join the, the United States. Um, and that was just by like a week before Reedfield. Um, so we were almost incorporated under the original 13. But anyway, um, a long time ago, um, and I thought it was pretty cool that we had uh, that we had that happen. So and we were part of Massachusetts then, correct? Because yes, yes, yeah. it was what 1820 was yeah. Maine's birthday. Yes. Okay, you, we got the cake. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you showed up. <laughs> Oh, that's, you get a picture? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It looks really good. It looks like yeah. Let's see if maybe Bill can get a, 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 get a, a zoom shot of it. We'll Where? see. Uh, maybe on, on one of the, where's a good Where spot, Bill? It? He's coming towards you. I don't know. <laughs> How about, uh, oh, oh. And she drops it. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. This has all the hallmarks of a disaster. Can I, it <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's right. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> says I should eat the whole cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You trying to tell me you're speeding up already? Is that what you're trying yeah, to tell me? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I try. I don't know if I'm buying that. I'm not very convincing. <laughs> <laughs> not convincing me. Yeah. yeah. Say that to my wife. She said to give him the whole cake. <laughs> You know what you're eating at work all the, all the rest of the week? <laughs> no, thank you. Just give Eric the whole cake. Take one to go. It's okay, I'll tell you tomorrow. Yeah. We won't tell anyone. You can just set the other one over there too. <laughs> you should just have it at the counter tomorrow, Angelica. It'd be very popular. It is very good. Catherine, you're vibrating. <laughs> Shaking the whole table. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Just I thought. <laughs> <laughs> powerful. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm in my meeting. <laughs> Five minutes a week. Okay, bye. Okay. Hey, Eric. So well, that's fun. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, no, it was my pleasure. I, I thought it was pretty cool that, that we landed just right. <laughs> so when's the next time it'll land? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's up to you guys. Right? Well, we could do it, Eric. <laughs> um, it would be on Monday. So, be a um, good excuse for Kate. No. Uh, as far as the, the uh, town meeting warrant and ballot, um, we've got a couple things here that are kind of put together. Uh, the warrant includes uh, everything that is um, part of the budget, uh, but in verbal form with, of course, the, the, the numbers included. Uh, we have it broken up in the standard format. What I did this year was I included the, the warrant first um, as kind of the, the premier um, high-level discussion. Uh, and then we also have um, the, um, uh, the summary report um, after the warrant. So we wanted to see more specifically what's happening in individual departments and individual revenue lines. Uh, we can do that. And um, I think one of the most important pieces of that um, summary sheet that kind of come, or those summary sheets that come through after the warrant uh, is the description of um, the uh, impact on taxpayers and also uh, the mill rate calculation. And uh, of course, the, the big one uh, for me is always the, the, the changes in what's been discussed and what's been done. Um, with the budget committee and with the select board over the past month. Uh, so um, that's how this is all put together. Uh, but um, I think it makes the most sense to kind of walk through the warrant uh, and talk about those individual articles. Um, because uh, we're still a little ways off from um, uh, having a firm budget and it's important that uh, we see these things in context. So. Uh, uh, well, I will say also, um, before I go on any more, that um, we do have that public hearing coming up um, on the draft budget and warrant on the 20th. So uh, that's just uh, less than two weeks away now. And uh, that'll be the, the opportunity, um, in addition to all the select board meetings and all the budget committee meetings, um, that's one of the premier opportunities to uh, talk about and, and, and have you know an impact on the budget because uh, we can still change it at that point. Uh, by the time we get to the 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 the, the March, excuse me, the um, April and May public hearings, uh, those are more uh, presenting the final product, uh, and we don't have the ability to make changes because again we're backed up about sixty days from um, uh, uh, the um, town meeting to even have. Uh, things presented to the town clerk, which means that we're backed up about 90 days, uh, a little bit less, uh, for the select board to make a final decision on the budget and, and the budget committee as well to make their recommendations. So um, the important dates and important process to, to think about. Uh, but I'll go back and we can get started with the individual articles. 
Okay, so the first um, several articles are the perfunctory ones. Uh, uh, we have the introduction and in getting people um, in. Uh, we have the greeting. We have the first article, which is the moderator. Uh, article two uh, is for um, electing select board members. Uh, article two point, uh, I guess it's, it's still article two, but we also have election of RSU 38 board members on there as well. And uh, under article three, um, we start talking about um, more um, uh, traditional budget related items, uh, not the administrative stuff as much. And uh, salaries and wages, this is a standard article. Every year we have that article that allows the select board to uh, set those wages and salaries that aren't otherwise specified. Uh, and jump in if you have any questions along any of this. Article four um, is uh, when we set the, um, the dates for interest. The interest rate itself uh, is typically set uh, by um, the Secretary of State, and that has been set at 8.5% this year, up a little bit uh, from last year. Uh, and then we have paying of interest, again, um, dates on when the town would pay interest for prepayments and what that amount would be. Uh, let's see, Article 6 is um, what to do if an article fails. This is a traditional article, uh, and it authorizes an expenditure up to 3 twelfths until we can have another meeting and uh, figure out what we're going to do about any uh, loggerheads over spending or policy. Um, Another town meeting, correct. Yep. Eric, can I ask I, a dumb question on that one? Sure. No, ask a smart question. Why don't we call it <laughs> one fourth? <laughs> I, I think it's the same reason we do like uh, two twelfths. Uh, but, but it, it, it has to do with the calendar months. People oh, okay. understand it better. Uh, you know, being, being the twelfths as opposed to. But no, that, that's a funny one. Yeah. So, Eric, in, in Article Four and Five, but they yeah. say like in Article Five it says. That um, you're authorizing town to the tax calculator to pay interest at a rate of eight point five percent, which is the same as the state rate of eight percent. Wasn't eight point five percent? Oh, about? that's a typo. That's right. That's a typo. There's a point Bam, five. Bam! Look at that. The same as Perfect. Eight point five. So which one is it? It's eight point five. Eight point five. Okay. And that's on capital article. Five, uh, a cap. Yeah, that, no, that's, that's doesn't rise to capital level yet. You, you teachers, you know, you're always teachers. Um, yeah, I missed a, that one. I found a couple. You what? Yeah. I missed that oh, one. Can I, can I have you say that for the recording? <laughs> I missed that one on Article 6. You get another piece wow. of cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, Article uh, 7, we get into administration. Um, and I'm just going to uh, go through these unless you want to stop and, and go through. Um, we can, but... Um, these are the numbers that were uh, reviewed um, uh, by the by the budget committee most recently. Uh, I don't believe there were too many changes, but I can talk about those when we get into the um, the final piece. Uh, administration, there there were no uh, changes to that uh, since our last meeting. Uh, so we have uh, the six hundred ninety five thousand two hundred eighty six dollars there. Uh, Article eight is for the. Um, uh, municipal maintenance. So again, that's grounds, building, and vehicles. Uh, and we've con con consolidated that uh, piece over the years, so it's a bit more logical and, and easier to digest. Uh, the general maintenance does um, uh, take the most, and that's because we have uh, wages and benefits in that first category. The um, <clears throat> Article 9, uh, community services, uh, we have things that are typically considered community services. We might be missing some, but uh, we have this broken down uh, by departments uh, and, uh, and division, typically animal control, uh, Kenneth McBelly, Council of Governments, Age Friendly. Um, age Friendly is one where um, this might belong more appropriately in a special revenue account, um, but we thought um, this time around, as we're transitioning, that it would make the most sense to have um, that continue to show. Typically, um, uh, though, if something is set up as a special revenue, we might see it show up in a different area. But, Eric, right. can I ask a question on this one too? Yeah. Is this where, like, um, we would add the piece about the emergency radio? Is that listed in here in community services, or have you put that somewhere different? Um, that would actually be under a capital reserve. Okay. Um, because it, it effectively it would be capital yeah. equipment that we'd be purchasing. Okay, and we already have an administrative capital <clears throat> line, so we put it there. Thank you. Yeah. Is there some specific age-friendly initiative is 
for? Or is that like for that committee that's in just, general? That's just their budget. Yeah. And, and that, that point about not having something specific is part of the reason why that might be better suited to a special revenue account, right? Um, and that's one of the things we talked about is if you have projects that are ongoing or a bit amorphous um, or might rely heavily on grants and, and, and kind of a, um, how things land during the year, um, that's one reason why that might be better suited for that. But, um, but no, they've got um, their Reedfield U, which usually costs a few hundred dollars, and then they have things here and there that they spend on. But they usually, I mean, what Age Friendly is doing is community service. So oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not like yeah. something. Um, so this is a silly question. The 1500 for streetlights, I did notice in the budget um, stuff that we were just looking at. In 2023, we budgeted 5700 but used 940 Is that the LED light difference? Yeah, that was the year we transitioned from, um, yeah, yeah. And then we're budgeting 1500 just to be able to have a little slush there. Okay, that was crazy. Yeah, and perhaps a, a, a replacement or two, because we actually, during that last storm in December, um, CMP walked off with like three of our streetlights and they, they were probably <laughs> damaged. <laughs> they were probably damaged because their poles fell um, and we were attached to their poles. So um, <laughs> they just like, wow. walked off with them. Makes it sound well, I mean, they just disappeared. Like they never, they didn't give them back to us or anything. Usually, <laughs> usually someone would say, Hey, you've got your equipment here. We're going to leave it for you. <laughs> well, um, because it might've been repairable as opposed to just having to replace it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, I don't know. You picture a, a light on a, on a Power pole that falls over. Quite well, hard to imagine it's really repairable, but maybe I guess yeah. Anyway, so we, we have to um, uh, we have to re replace a couple of those and this that, year. That was the big change in the LED light switchover. Is that CMP formerly owned the sodium lights? Yep. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> they were much more expensive to run, but we also part of that cost was paying. CMP for those lights because of course they're not giving to to you for free, right. although it might appear it was. But um, so now, if we want more or we have to replace them, that's on us. But you, as Carol pointed out, that's a huge difference. We can replace a light here and there. Um, yeah, for that but honestly, that lights. was one of the things I hadn't really thought about was. Well, what happens if there's a storm and, and the street light gets knocked down? Um, and that happened. Um, with an odd, uh, oddly high occurrence that December storm. So, yeah. It might be worth asking CMP um, if, since they belong to us and they're on their poll, maybe they could return them. Yeah. Yeah. Because there may be like a charge for the arm and a charge for the head. And yeah. Probably in a dumpster. Somewhere. And the arm <laughs> probably doesn't. Yeah. I can imagine we still find them now. now. <laughs> yeah. No, too late, probably too late to ask yeah. for them back. Yeah. <laughs> but in the future. Right. Yeah. I think in the time of a storm, that's the least of their concerns. Right. Yeah. Right. And it was it's the least of ours, too. <laughs> yeah. right. I didn't realize they were gone until a yeah, they're, later. They're probably not gone. We, we should save this bulb. Yeah. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> yeah. Just um, get the pole up and let's get yeah. picked of it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, Article uh, 10. Um, oh, we just did that. Or article, no, we did that. We did that. Uh, recreation, yes. parks, and activities. Uh, we have beach, recreation, heritage days, conservation, town properties, and trails. And this actually um, is one where I, I, I think I'm, we may need to break this out uh, because I believe there was a request or a discussion about having the community services, community programming coordinator position listed separately. Right now, that is not, um, but we could certainly break it out so that it, it is uh, as a separate article. Or we could show it separately as a line item under this one. There's a few ways we could do that. That was my question because in 2023 it said we spent 21,000 and this is budgeted for 43.8 and that's the mm. difference is um, the recreation. It, there's a lot position? going on there, but okay. um, in general, the recreation position uh, I think added around 16,000 okay. to 18,000. I'd have to look back at the math, but um, a big chunk of that was for that position, correct? I'm happy with leaving it as part of rec or with having it listed in this same category, but not having it separate. So you could have rec and have its amount and then have the program coordinator as another line there with its amount. I don't know. I think that's a good idea. Because I think people should know what that, what's going on with that for sure. Yeah. The more we can break it out, yep. the better. I will do that. Probably 
wouldn't be broken out in the future because it wouldn't be new. But it is new, right. so but I think we need to new, break it out. Yeah. That's the transparency piece. So no, they're not going to know what we spent last time, but but yeah. Right. So it then next addition. year, when you're looking at this year and next year, there shouldn't be a big change <laughs> unless we're adding programming. So, so um, Angelica pointed out that we actually, uh, I missed Article 10. So uh, no. I was just going to oh. ask, <laughs> off topic. Oh, yeah, 9-11. Oh, yeah. wow, right. There is yeah. no Article 10. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Uh, um, so, <laughs> so does that mean this is actually Article 10 you just did, or is there another mystery? That, that would be Article 10. So what happened is we were, I, I, I was uh, fiddling around with trying to figure out where the um, uh, articles for uh, Article 12 and 13 were going to go, and at one point they were ahead. Um, but anyway, things got moved around, but that's a, it's just a, a, a sequential thing. I'll fix that. The renumbering. Okay. Yep. Good job, Angel. Yeah. Dave, you had started coming to meetings last year mm -hmm. around this time, didn't you? Yes. So you, you, you're a little bit familiar with this? Yep. Okay. Just ask more what you called stupid questions. Yeah. <laughs> Most no, of them no. will be things like that. <laughs> 9, 11, 12. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this is a draft. <laughs> um, yeah, so Article 12. Um, uh, this is where we start getting into this. Which is section. actually going to be Article 11, right? Um, yeah, which is actually going to be Article 11, but, but for okay. the sake of discussion tonight, we're going to we're going to go, go with those numbers exactly okay. as it is on the paper, right, right or wrong. We'll All stick right. with the hidden pattern. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so this is the first of the two um, articles relating to the fairgrounds. Um, there was some discussion at the at the group, um, uh, the fairgrounds group, about which one should come first. I, I really do feel that it's better to have the funding or at least a key piece of the funding first especially when it's grant funding um, so that way people don't hit uh, quite as hard of a landing on uh, on the project itself uh, I think that it's good to have the idea in people's heads that this is grant funded and then reiterate that uh, with article 13 uh, which talks about the, um, the actual project uh, a few key pieces here the multi-use recreational field that language is very similar to what was used last year um, we are going to be attaching to this a map. Again, not a not a hundred percent complete map, but a um, the, the, you know, the concept map. Um, and then we're also going to be talking about the um, project funding. Again, constructing funded exclusively by, by federal, state, and private grant sources and donations. So that's redundant. That last part we already voted on that last year, but I think it really is important to remind people where this is coming from. So. Um, Happy to um, eat some cake and let you guys talk about those two articles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if you didn't include it in Article 13, then people would be like, so where are we paying for it? Right. So I think it's really important that it is there. I had a question on 12. Is is that an actual um, the project agreement is a grant? Should, can we put the word grant in there somewhere in number 12? Um, the, the project agreement uh, seemed a little fuzzy. I would have to look at that. I'll ask. So Article 12 uh, is actually the language comes from the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So okay. they said, this is your article. Okay. So um, we did a, a very minimal amount of wordsmithing to add in, you know, town of Reedfield in the name of the project. But I will check on that and see if there's any way to reference the grant. Well, it um, does say in Article 12 for federal financing yeah. assistance and then in Article 13 exclusively by federal blah, blah, blah funds. You're looking for the word grant, though, I do. You said, right? Yeah. I, I it's think. it's kind of in there. I When I read that, I'm like, <clears throat> is this payment for the project? And it, um, when you talk about land project agreement, um, I, I thought I knew what it was about. Financing I assistance if other people were kind of sounds like a long way of saying grant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the government may be to confused. be federal financing assistance, <clears throat> federal financing grant. I don't know. I'll, I'll ask them if we can, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask if we can wordsmith that at all. And we have no dollar amounts in 13. I know it's all, public, yeah. you know, non. That was a deliberate choice. Um, okay. Because we really don't know what it's going to cost. And especially when we're talking about in-kind contributions, we can have a three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars swing in costs if the Army National Guard comes through and does the work for us. So, um, out of pocket might even be 
um, you know, a, a, just a couple hundred thousand, depending on how it all shakes out. So there really isn't any way to honestly put in uh, a, a cost estimate, but that's going to be part of our discussion, right? So when we send out our our, 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 our mailer and our, our explanation documents, we will have discussion about this and we'll answer that very question. Well, why isn't there a cost here? Well, A, because it's covered through other sources, so it's not a tax impact, so it doesn't belong on the warrant for that respect, um, but also because we're still trying to figure that out and it will vary wildly depending on what kind of resources we have applied, so. But it would be important to state that that particular fund project agreement is covering half. I don't know if it would because um, Land and Water Conservation Fund says they'll cover up to half, but that doesn't mean they will cover half. So okay, it's so again, the, the, their language, I'll have to ask about that change as well, because again, Article 12 is their language. Yeah. Okay. Um, but in our explanation document, I think it's important because people might be looking at the cost Oh, absolutely. it is out there yeah. and it's a million dollars. Well, how are we ever going to raise that much in donations? Well, we're not. Yeah, no, I think that, that, that's that's a, a good point that um, that does belong in the explanation document. Yeah, yeah. that number is out there. Yeah, and that will be ready before absentee ballots go out. Uh, everything has to be ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you mean the the, the explanation document? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um. Anything else on on that generally? Okay. Article fourteen. Uh, protection. Um, so we have fire department, but we also have peripheral services that are really um, uh, beyond our control. Um, ambulances, dispatching, uh, emergency operations is what we spend to keep our emergency plan up to date, um, to keep that kit up to date. Also, um, we have money to buy a few more handheld radios because we don't really have enough of those. Uh, and we found how essential those were for uh, first responders and, and um, emergency folks uh, during that last storm in December. Uh, Article 15, uh, cemetery materials and services, uh, pretty standard on that one. Uh, we did, um, when we get to the capital, uh, I'll note that we did reduce the cemetery capital savings by $5,000, um, but I'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, roads and drainage, uh, this is an increase over the prior years, um, in part because we're trying to account for uh, uh, a couple things, inflation and the cost of materials. Um, uh, we have an escalator in the, um, in the plow contract based on consumer price index, so there's that inflation there. Uh, but also, and that's under winter roads, um, under summer roads, uh, we are putting more money into maintenance um, and hopefully that means we're spending less on the back end doing repairs uh, and less on capital work. So we did increase that intentionally because we've seen uh, such significant damage from storms over the past couple of years. Uh, and that was discussed with the budget committee and the road committee. Uh, article uh, 17 is ARPA. Um, and uh, this one, um, I, I'm gonna talk to the town attorney about a bit more, but uh, we're basically appropriating funds here. We didn't use the word appropriate, uh, but I think that this gets the point across that um, ARPA funds are going to be used for paving. And part of the reason we're doing that is because we also, um, in the next article, are looking to use some road funds for the sidewalk. Uh, we have to do that because the federal government won't let us spend ARPA funds on the sidewalk, um, but by replacing those funds with, with ARPA, we're then able to basically shift those um, and have no tax impact um, in the current budget. There, there has been in the past years we built up the reserve. So Article 18 uh, talks about the project, the approval for the project, and the funding for the project uh, with um, the 80% share, 960,000 coming from the federal grant. Um, 50,000 is what we have roughly in our reserve uh, at the end of this fiscal year available to be applied. Uh, and then the uh, uh, one, or excuse me, the 190 um, is what we would have uh, available um, because we've backfilled the road budget with, with ARPA funds. Uh, and so that's how this church road sidewalk project comes together. Um, I'm still not 100% certain on the language because I have up to listed there. I think that's safe. Um, but I also think that some of the changes we're making are going to reduce the cost of that project. But again, it's so hard to tell 
uh, what's going to happen two years out when this thing's constructed. Um, the, the engineers did build in a, fa a factor, I think, five percent annually, um, and they are looking at. You know, they always are conservative, but I just want to make sure that when I when I talk to um, the town attorney and also um, to the engineers that that they're comfortable with this um, arrangement and uh, how this is all coming together. So, I have a question. Um, so you can. <clears throat> so if the when when we get to if it's approved, and we get to building this in another eighteen months, and the cost has gone up ten percent, and they only budgeted in five percent. What do we do at that point? Well, we have to um, we have to look at a couple options. Um, if we have um, available funds in designated funds that might be appropriate. The board could consider that, you know, like Carol was talking about earlier. Um, it wouldn't be unreasonable to pull a little bit more out of the road reserve, but you'd have to be very careful about that and make sure it was something you wanted to do and thought the voters would support. Um, that's more of a political consequence than anything. But um, the other side of it would be, we could also go back to town meeting. Um, or we could change the scope of the project uh, provided that the um, engineers uh, and federal, not the engineers, but the, the federal um, sponsor uh, would be okay with that. So there's a few options there, but I really think the most likely one would be we, we would have to go back to town meeting to get an additional appropriation. Thank you. Uh, so um, article 19, capital improvements. This is where we talk about tax dollars that are going into the reserve accounts, right? So this is separate from what um, the capital investment plan calls for. This only shows what we are raising out of taxes and appropriating to go into those reserve accounts. So um, I just wanted to make that point clear because this, you know, we, we might spend $10,000 on administration equipment. Um, that is one of those lines you asked about out low power FM. We had put in 10,000 for that. We dropped that down to five because we currently have 10,000 in reserve. So we could um, utilize some of that in the next year or two uh, to, um, uh, to fund some of that low power FM equipment if we got to say that $10,000 uh, mark, which is um, you know, quite possible. So um, rather than raise it all in one year, we're gonna look at using the reserves about, and we did that in a few other areas to try to save money on this budget. Uh, municipal buildings, 25,000, that actually had been uh, 40,000. So we did peel $15,000 out of that. Um, I, I really think that uh, the way things are looking, we want to put that back in uh, because we're going to be spending 20 at least on the, the septic field and tank here at the town office. So that's going to affect the, the, the tax rate because we don't really have other resources unless we pull more out of the undesignated fund, which we could do. Um, but we'll have to look at that in, in context. So when you say put it back in, do you mean this year um, into this budget? Into this budget. Okay. So bump that number back up to 40 or maybe even bring it up to 45 um, because we are going to be, um, we were at the low end of the savings threshold for that account. Um, so with that $20,000 draw, drawdown um, or 25, we would be underneath what our policy says we should be at, and we know that's going to happen because that tank's going to get fixed in the next couple of weeks uh, to a month. So, did um, I miss something on what's wrong with the system? Yes. Uh, so um, you did. Um, we um, thirty second update is fine. Yeah, um, we we went to have um, some work done, and uh, we said, "Well, why don't you check out back?" They dug up the cover, um, opened the cover, and then we had water um, four inches above the cover bubbling up. So, uh, and it wasn't just water. Okay. How's that? <laughs> so it's failed rather than we just weren't emptying it in time. Yes, it's failed. Yeah. It, um, just it, it was <laughs> at least um, almost 30 well, years, but the documentation says it might have been as early as 1990, the last time that was you know, replaced. So. And so are we fixing that currently and paying for it out of next year's money? We, um, we, will be, we have to fix it. It'll come out of the reserve, right? Okay. Um, and, and then, then we'll have to think about what our balance looks like. Okay, so that's why I might have to increase the reserve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But this number on this ballot's going to change. Is Probably. that what you're saying? Well, it, yes. To 40, 40 or 45. I'm, I'm going to recommend that. It's, it's up to you guys, really. Um, but I mean, if you want to um, 
take that action now. You can if you want to wait. It's um, good to see what that would do. To the, I'd like to see what it would do to the line item. But do we have quotes yet on what we're really talking about, or we just take? We don't. We just have an estimate from an estimate from a um, from an estimator um, who does um, the septic design. So we're going to have someone look at it, make sure our capacity is still appropriate do the design for the tank and the field, spec it out, and then we give that to a contractor to build. Right. Yeah. So like, just in general, when I look at this list, it's like, so what is what are they doing to the building of $25,000 or to the fire department, 25,000, but we don't have a specific, like you said, these are reserves. Yep. So the equipment reserves, that's a little vague. What kind of equipment can that be used for? That's not a specific department type of equipment reserve or? Uh, I mean, it, it is, it's, I guess, maintenance related. So that's where, like, for example, we're gonna be uh, spending out of the, that fund for the, the town truck replacement. Um, that's where we would replace the, um, the Bobcat out of. It's where we would replace um, the town pickup truck out of uh, anything like that. Uh, we also do some um, mid-sized uh, small engine type stuff like the, um, that chipper shredder would come out of there. Um, so really, we're just putting money into reserve. Um, that number has a, a funny uh, shape to it, um, being odd, uh, because we also take our lease payments out of there, and we know we have certain lease payments coming up. So um, that's why that looks that way. Um, but those are the things that would be included. And that's all in the budget, which is on the sheets following this. Um, I'm not sure if that level of detail is, but that would have been on the, the detail that we had discussed at the uh, budget committee meetings and right. uh, we ha do have some detail um, that was given to the select board uh, probably can, a month or so ago but we can find that on the budget committee tab and the, all the details are there yes to see yep. what makes that up yeah and and uh, i'm hoping that we have enough uh, certainty with the town truck um, uh, lease agreement and the, the, the prospective sale price that we might be able to um uh, narrow that down a bit, but right now uh, we're in, we're planning on having some money go in there to cover uh, part of that lease too. But again, um, this is just what is being raised in taxes to go into those accounts. What's spent is completely different. Uh, and then transfer station thirteen thousand that unchanged. That's our share of the capital reserve. Uh, Town of Wayne and Fayette are putting in probably forty eight. Uh, excuse me, fifty eight percent. Uh, of, of the total. So that's our 42% share of that. And you'll see the same thing under the transportation budget. On the next line. On the next line. Uh, so that 173,000 is a lot better than the 300 and something we used to see. Um, again, because we're properly um, um, accounting for this, this is just Reed Field's share. What we're raising out of taxes to pay for our portion of the operating expense. Uh, and that's up probably six or seven percent, uh, similar to other departments that we're seeing. Um, uh, but again, uh, Fayette and Wayne are paying a lion's share of that um, on, on the other side. Uh, Article 21, um, regional assessments, uh, Cobbacy Watershed and First Park. Um, I haven't gotten a final number from Cobbacy, but we had budgeted uh, five percent, and I think that they were going to be right in that range. Uh, with, with their increase. First Park, uh, this is a pretty reliable number. They gave us their budget. Um, what they don't always know is what their revenue is going to be, but last year was a, a net positive. This year, they're projecting um, that we'll be in the black by a couple thousand dollars, and hopefully that trend continues. Uh, Article 22, uh, this is debt service. Uh, this one's pretty boring. It's all scheduled out. There is no uh, question on any of this. This is exactly what we owe. Uh, Article 23, we have the uh, Kennebec Behavioral Health. This is the first of several of the um, articles for nonprofits. And uh, I will just run through these uh, uh, and skip over until we get to uh, the boat inspections, Article 26. There was an effort uh, made to try to add $1,000 for friends of the Cobbacy watershed. They did not um, meet the, um, the petition threshold. So I just wanted to make the board aware of that. Um, what you want to do with it is up to you, but um, they, they only were able to get like 56 signatures uh, as opposed to the 160 that would have been required. Um, so um, they didn't meet that. So that wasn't included on here per the policy. And did they miss a deadline? 
Oh, uh, they, well, they they missed the deadline because they by the by the deadline they only collected they, they, didn't, have they didn't have the signatures. So okay, yeah. so yeah. that's what I mean. They didn't have the signatures by the deadline. That's correct. Yep. So they could yeah. still do this for next town meeting. They absolutely could. Okay. Yep. yep. So, um, I'm sorry, Eric. So twenty two municipal yes. building bond, and then we have municipal building reserves, and then municipal building and paving. So the bond thing, the debt service. Explain that a little more. So, oh, but we're legally bound to pay. Because we've okay. already, these Just are like loan loans we've taken out. So we have to pay them back. And that's in the CIP. Those numbers are in this included in the CIP. Right, Eric? Um, I'm not sure they are, but they're definitely included in the debt schedule. That's part of the um, summary sheets. But these are things we've already borrowed in yeah, order to so do the, the, the year is the most important. So, you know, 2016, that's when okay. we bought the fire truck. Uh, 2018, that was a dam. Um, 2020 was the building bond. That was for the library and fire station. Uh, um, and 2021 was the extra <laughs> for the library and fire station, okay. plus you. the paving work. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and those are all, yeah, as Catherine said, legally obligated. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Good question. Um, so uh, the uh, Catherine mentioned something about the Article Thirty. Article Thirty should yep. just say a thousand for the Marana Cook Food Bank, not continued restoration of. Yeah, that must have been a copy and paste from the um, yeah that's the, like, the, that's from the article above. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll make a note on Article Thirty. I did catch that one, Steve. <laughs> I, I did not. All right. Um, yeah. So that wraps up the um, the nonprofits. Um, we do have the snowmobile club on here. Um, and this is one that is kind of a question as to whether or not it belongs under the nonprofits um, or whether it might belong under in another category, but uh, it's been this way for a very long time. So I don't see any real reason to change it. Um, but that money um, is basically a revenue allocation um, and it's not really from um, taxes. It's, it's the allocation of revenues that we have coming in. So it's a little bit different. But um, I don't see any issue with leaving that where it is. And we're not legally bound to do this. This is a request. That's correct. Yep. Yep. Um, and it could be that we just decide to give them, you know, twenty five hundred bucks like everybody else. Uh, but they've requested in the past to have the equal to equal to the amount that we collect in snowmobile registration fees from the year before. So um, unfortunately, they've had some hard years. Um, so at some point, it might. You know, we might want to think about how we approach that, but but they'd have to put that in their request. They would, yeah. Right. So the conversation would need to be had ahead of time, so that they increase their request if they wanted more. Yeah, but I mean, they they've been floating with this for for a long time, so I think unless they rock the boat, we probably won't either. <clears throat> um, uh, property tax abatements. Um, that's for for. Um, both uh, poverty abatements and errors. So as you, you all know, we um, uh, typically have adjustments for both of those things throughout the year. Um, this uh, amount has been um, satisfactory. We'll see what happens with this first year of the revaluation. Uh, next year's budget, we may want to increase that because the more uh, adjustment you make, um, the more people look at their bills and say, well, hey, that's not right. Um, and the more people may look at the bill and say, well, geez, I just can't, I can't do this this year. Um, uh, there really shouldn't be a change in the overall burden um, unless you've made improvements to your property. But sometimes people get used to not paying for that garage they converted to an apartment and then they might have to start paying for it. So um, there are things like that that get caught when we do um, the, um, the reval. My understanding was we weren't putting the reval in until we had all four years of data and everyone was going at once. So that's for the schedule, but if someone has a, um, an improvement or if someone has a reduction, those things are being okay. captured as they go because in right. real time it's there. It's just the overall change in the value schedule doesn't happen until that everybody's complete. That way you can, well, you have the, the ability to okay. spread so it evenly. So things that have been missed, whether yep. they're, whichever favor they're in, the property owner or the town. Yep. We'll fix those as we go. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Errors and emissions. And, and those, um, you know, we always find a few of those and they mm -hmm. usually uh, balance out, although it's been a long time since we've done a full value revaluation. So we're seeing a little bit more on the side of, well, that deck wasn't there. Um, but 
that's okay. Um, they probably should have paid taxes on it earlier. So, um, Article 33, uh, this is the general assistance category. Uh, this is um, uh, our uh, expense. We have an offsetting revenue. The state of Maine, uh, in theory, pays 50%. Uh, of what we expend on general assistance. Um, sadly though, we don't really ever touch this amount uh, because the threshold, the state mandated requirements for uh, general assistance eligibility are so low that most people can't meet them uh, unless they are truly destitute. Um, so we do utilize other programs, um, our uh, heating assistance fund, for example, to help offset. Uh, and oftentimes uh, the staff and I provide non-financial uh, assistance helping people um, get to a place to find work or um, setting them up with neighbors riding neighbors or uh, giving them financial advice on, well, you might want to change your, your um, spending habits in this area, things like that. So um, just because this line doesn't get hit much uh, doesn't mean that there's not assistance being provided. Do we need to leave it at the 5,000 level when historically we aren't ever spending 5,000? We don't. Um, we, we could we could lower that, but I will say that I would expect a very strong opposition from the budget committee on that. Okay. Um, just just for your knowledge. Okay. So. You're talking about general assistance? Right, right, general assistance. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think yeah. on this year's budget, I looked and we've spent $250. Yeah. I'm shocked it's and not. It, it's never good. more than 1000 and we get half of that back. So And the heat assistance, all that is like. Yeah, that's different because yeah. we don't budget tax money for that. That's bottles. People don't ask. This. I know any of that. Yeah. Um, and I guess the good thing is that, you know, that, that does, if it's not spent, goes back into the general fund, which then can be allocated to help offset tax impacts. So in, in a sense, it's not the end of the world that we're not spending that money because it does go into the it general rolls fund. back. Yeah. Uh, okay. So revenues. Um, uh, this is a, uh, an administrative article on 34 um, that allows the board to um, spend these things for their intended purpose. Um, when we get to talking about the administration ordinance, um, this is one that I would like to include in, in that so that we don't have to have it on a routine basis in our regular town meeting warrant because it always gets approved because everybody wants us to spend money on those projects that we get grants and donations for typically. Um, Article 35, these are all our estimated revenues. Um, I won't go through this in too much detail, but the biggest difference here that is worth noting is uh, last year that 370,000 on the first line for state revenue sharing uh, was $430,000. So we, uh, we lost a tremendous amount. Um, and uh, to be fair to the state, um, they have a formula and their formula has been in place for a few years now. Uh, but it's a, it's a formula that is unforgiving. If you get a, over a certain threshold, your um, ability to draw down on the second issuance of state revenues goes away completely. So it's all or nothing. So we used to get this, the second half of state revenue sharing. Um, their formula has changed. Um, the formula tends to favor larger municipalities in part because they're taking more of a burden for social services and things like that. Um, one reason why our general assistance isn't that big, but uh, unfortunately um, the larger cities have been um, getting more resources per the formula. Uh, and so we, along with a number of other towns, our size fell off the cliff and lost 10 to 15% of what we were getting from the state of Maine, which uh, we're grateful for the $370,000 because that's huge. Um, that's about a quarter or a third of what we would be um, paying in, in, um, in tax impacts. So that's, that's a big number, but it's also a big number when we lose 10 or 15% of it. So um, that, that was a big thing for, this, for, for us to deal with with the budget committee over the past month. Um, and I, I highlighted some of those areas where we did make cuts to do that. Uh, other than that, I did increase uh, motor vehicle excise taxes to 625,000 because I felt that looked more realistic uh, following uh, some analysis. I tracked um, the last two years uh, of, expend of, of revenues um, and averaged those. And then I took our trajectory this year through February um, and those actually matched pretty closely. So I was able to project forward through the end of this fiscal year to see about where we were. We would be coming in this fiscal year around $650,000, not knowing how um, the economy is going to look 
um, if things blow up in Russia or whatever else, um, that um, uh, we might we might see some impacts there. The economy very directly impacts motor vehicle sales. It's a big revenue pot, so I don't want to play games with it. I'd rather be a little bit conservative. 625 seemed reasonable when we're projecting 650 this year. That's a long story, but it's, I think, worth noting. Um, and then everything else is just little bits here and there. Um, uh, one item that I think uh, also probably deserves mention is interest on investments. Uh, 70, that's back up at the beginning, the third line down, $75,000. In years past, that number was 5,000 because we weren't investing uh, our general uh, fund and our special revenue available balances. Uh, the rates weren't great. They were probably two or 3%. Uh, but I think that now that we've um, gotten a hold of, of a process to do that, um, we probably won't see five and a half percent again for a long time, uh, but we will probably see four to 5% next year. So um, I think it's good for us to consider that when we talk about reserve balances, because that money isn't just sitting there, it's making us money um, that, that uh, at, at higher than the rate of inflation. So that's a value to the town uh, of, of having some reserve balances. Do we need to extend the meeting? No, we go oh. till nine today. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to try to talk more quickly. But, no, you're good. Um, but and the I, transfer I, yeah. station is down significantly because our expense is down because we are not including Fayette and Wayne. That's correct. Yep. So if you're just looking at bottom line numbers, that makes a, quite a bit of difference, like 180000 or so. Exactly. Um, so I uh, want to talk a little bit about those special um, uh, reserves that uh, Ron was referencing. Um, some of those are funded out of, um, we, we talked earlier about the capital reserves that were funded through taxes. So we took tax dollars, put them into the capital reserve. Um, these uh, items under article 36, same idea, but instead of going into a capital reserve, they're going into the special revenue. So uh, the conservation land um, reserve, um, we do have, um, uh, actually, no, these are appropriations. Sorry, this is the other direction. This is money coming from, um, these designated funds and trust funds that's going to offset tax impacts. Um, the conservation land, special revenue, uh, that's the money that comes from town farm forests. The conservation uh, typically takes a little bit of money out of there every year to help offset the tax impacts of their operations. So that's what that one's for. Legal services. Uh, this one, uh, we've built, we built up a very healthy reserve. So we know that this year we can pull um, the full cost of our estimated legal services out of the reserve. So that's a net zero to taxpayers this year on legal fees. So that's a very positive thing. Uh, and we can afford it because we had, a, again, a big, a big fund. Um, and we have no pending legis um, litigation. No pending litigation. And we're still going to have, uh, I think, 35 to 40,000. I'd have to look back, but it's still a healthy reserve because it only takes one lawsuit that could cost us $20,000. And if we have two, then we're in trouble. So um, uh, good to have that. Uh, the uh, recreation special, um, this is uh, money coming out of the recreation reserve to help offset their cost of their operations. Uh, more generally, we're talking about things like the purchase of equipment, but also this year, particularly, we're thinking about offsetting the cost of uh, the community programming coordinator, because in the, in the long view, we do expect that, that we'll have revenue coming in that's going to offset a large portion of the cost of that position. Um, so this is just a, a, a kind of a dry run on that. Uh, and then cemetery perpetual care funds. Uh, cemetery typically pulls uh, five to 15,000, depending on the year, out of their trust funds. Uh, they have, I think, 70 or $80,000 that is in uh, a, a separate reserve that they invest. Um, and they're usually making uh, eight to 10,000 a year on that. So they have a pretty good rate of return, um, typically. So those are gonna offset tax impacts by using designated funds. Um, and then going on with the um, use of funds to offset taxes, we have $15,000 for the select board of contingency. Uh, this used to be 25. This is one of those areas that I cut. Um, again, open for discussion. Uh, but um, we've never really approached the $25,000 mark in the past several years. And I know there was some sentiment in the past that that was too high. So, so here we are. <laughs> uh, cut that down to 50. Um, use of uh, $335,000 from the unassigned fund balance. So 
the um, if you add those up, the, the fifteen thousand from this Article uh, Thirty Seven and Article Thirty Eight, the three hundred thirty five thousand get that gets that totals the the three hundred fifty thousand that we are looking to use from the unassigned fund balance to offset tax impacts generally. So. Uh, this is the area where um, we could pull more, um, we could pull less. This is the big lever, uh, but it's one that we want to be very mindful of because if we draw down too much, it might not be sustainable. If we draw down too little, we could have too high of a reserve balance. Um, as Ron was saying, uh, between two and three months is where we want to be. Uh, right now, we're closer to three on paper, but we actually have some uh, things happening um, and some drawdowns that will probably pull us back. Um, right now, I'm estimating that we're at the end of fiscal year 2025, because I try to estimate through the budget year, right, because it doesn't make sense to just look at what we have at the end of this year. We want to look through next year. Uh, we'll still be right about that three-month threshold. Uh, and I, I'd like to stay there for a couple reasons. One um, is because we are using some of that money uh, for CDs and making investments uh, money off of it. Also, we're going to need to float some of these projects that we're going to be reimbursed for things like the fairgrounds, things like the church road sidewalk. So having a healthy reserve gives us the ability to do that without having to borrow, uh, which is we don't want to do that. We don't want to take out a, um, a grant anticipation or a bond anticipation note or anything like that. Um, so there's two reasons. Um, the third reason, I think, is that uh, we, we, um, we don't know exactly what things are going to look like because we're in that transition phase. We don't know how much money exactly is going to roll into the reserve accounts at the end of this fiscal year uh, because this is the first year that we have said unexpended balances in operating budgets that aren't specifically designated are going to go into the general fund. So we're probably going to see an uptick in money going into the general fund but also we have been cutting and, and uh, drawing down pretty heavily our designated reserve funds, things like the building reserve and all that. So we may need to pull out of the, um, the general fund, like Ron was saying, to cover some of those capital expenses that are, um, that are um, known and planned for. So because of that uncertainty, I'd like to stay at that three months threshold, but that's a, kind of a long winded explanation of why we came to that 350. It helps keep the tax increase uh, as low as possible by still retaining some, uh, at least rationale um, for what's a responsible level, right? Um, and when I first started here, this is the last thing I'll say about it. Um, uh, we, we drew down like almost $400,000 um, the first year I was here. Um, it wasn't a budget that I was part of, it was a budget I implemented, but the next year we had to go back and raise taxes because they had taken so much out of the um, out of the reserve that it wasn't sustainable and we were going to see a, a, a you know a, a very low reserve balance level in our, in our general fund and we had to make up for that so they had to raise taxes again because they'd overspent the reserves uh, and i don't want to see that happen either so um i'll stop talking for a second and let you guys talk because i know you had wanted to discuss that I think I would just, um, I, I think you're on the right track there. I think that what I see you trying to do, and I think you've been pretty effective at it, is is try to keep from having really big swings in the taxes, you know? And I think that's just really important for people so they can kind of know what to expect, you know? So, I don't know, I just, it, from what I've seen since you've been around, I think you've done a really good job of, managing those swings and i so if that's what you recommend i'm i'm pretty on board with that to tell you the truth thanks i agree that's been ever since we started the cip that's been the whole goal of our budgeting and really letting the budget committee do the budget deliberation on all the little expenses is really to keep a group of people who really know that stuff because they see it year after year um, to try and make things level. So the, the normal expenses we have coupled with the, the major things that come, mm -hmm. let's get that to all level out so that at least from the municipal side, you might see a 10 or $20 increase per month on your taxes, which for most people is probably doable. 
not seeing a hundred dollars a month increase. Right. Now yeah. you may still get that because of the school and the county budgets being tucked in with that, but um, those are things that people, well, not the municipal, I mean, not the county, but the school budget people will vote on that. And if they vote in a big budget, then they have to understand there's a big impact to what they pay yeah. each month. Yeah, and that was, I think, part of the issue we had back in 2015 was, or 16, uh, was that the, the board saw a, a big impact coming from the school uh, and they wanted to, to mitigate that. And it was a, a good sentiment, but the, the way to do it was, wasn't to draw down from the municipal reserves uh, because that hurt us in the long term. Right. Um, but, okay, uh, so that really is the, the overall budget. Um, uh, and um, the next articles are all ordinance articles. Uh, and these are all things that um, we've talked about. The one that I want to point out that we haven't spent much time on but need to is the administration ordinance, the administrative ordinance, excuse me. Uh, the second one down, Article 40. Uh, and that one, um, we had made changes the last two years. Um, but the changes we made last year were actually based on a version of the ordinance that had been um, in place from two years earlier. So there was like a, a bit of a, of a, of a leapfrog. Uh, so we have some cleaning up to do with that. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is bring the select board a, a version of the cleaned up ordinance uh, for your April meeting, um, one that's gone through legal review. And that way you can deal with it with hopefully one pass um, and, um, and be comfortable with it. Uh, but again, it's really just um, the, the only... Um, uh, big changes there outside of cleaning up the, the leapfrog activity uh, was to uh, change how we address the uh, payment of taxes uh, or the, um, the disposition of tax acquired property um, because there was a conflict there with the other ordinance. So um, that one um, we'll, we'll look at later. Uh, and then everything else you should have seen uh, at least one, if not two uh, versions of so far. Have we actually looked at the cable TV ordinance? Uh, no, you're right. I forgot what, that one we haven't also. So that one's another one that we probably will get to on the 8th because we're meeting on the 19th of March. On the 1st. Oh, the few, 1st, excuse me. Yeah, April 1st, not the 8th. Um, we're having a, a meeting with the um, uh, uh, connectivity. connectivity Committee. Catherine, why don't you talk on this one? I'm, I'm about to spend. <laughs> connectivity <laughs> Committee My is meeting on the 19th so well. and uh, Rocco Graziano has been <laughs> graciously looking at what we were given from legal and there's some things there that need to be stricken because <laughs> they just don't apply to a town like Reedfield. Um, and so hopefully if we get it done and the four or five of us agree on it, then it'll come forward. And if we don't on the 19th, then this is going to just get removed and it'll go in any future year. Um, yep. Carol. Um, the land use ordinance, could you refresh my memory of what planning board what that one is about um well um i good you guess i'm on the planning board here um right. <laughs> all i can say is that the, the big lift is on ld 2003 <laughs> <laughs> okay great nice job eric <laughs> i assumed it was just the the mandate update I, I, my understanding is that's all it is at this point yeah, governor's mandate that we have to meet so what you're talking about the governor's mandate we have to meet is what you're talking about okay we don't have that finalized yet uh not yet no okay. the planning board you have a public hearing on it when uh next week two weeks from now yeah. what yeah. can you repeat that the planning board has we don't public do the on? we don't do the hearings on that the planning board does those so but what is that date I, I don't know. Um, in a couple of weeks. I'd have to evidently. look. Um, okay, because I've had people ask, what is still going on? And I said, I don't know. Yes. So um, you're absolutely right, Catherine. I will point out, though, that we do discuss these changes in, in summary form at our regular warrant and article discussions. Right. Um, but, but no, the, the planning board is required for any land use changes to have a separate public hearing. Um, and I'll, um, I'll make sure we get that um, publicized and highlighted when it happens. And there are always just normal things that you guys find with language and the state changes something and it has to be changed wherever it is in our ordinances. And so it's, it's sort of housekeeping things. Looks like it is March 20th. 
at 6 30 maybe oh, actually we can talk a little bit about that today what, what are uh, what's March 20? 20? Monthly, Isn't that the, exactly oh no that's not that's I'm the summer hearing that's, warrant, right? that's wrong never mind Okay. So, so exactly what Brandon said. It, it's um, it's it's mostly the um, the, the, the legislative mandate. Yeah. A timekeeper. So, we good on that? Because we have twenty minutes worth of agenda items remaining. I'm I'm good. If you're good. Minutes of meeting time. So, thanks for all the edits and the discussion. Great, so let's move on to item 24104, consider a second reading of the revised solid waste and recycling ordinance. Can I go back for just a second? Oh, is, this, is this set in stone, this warrant, or will we have another chance to discuss this? Oh, this is like the first adding, reading. Oh, yeah. You, you get a sure. second chance. Yeah. Um, I figured there was. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but it's, not, it's not long though. It's sometime in early April. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so if you have something, raise it now. Uh, well, my my biggest thing is I'd, I'd like to see something with the open space thing, uh, whether it be a direct question. I find that a very vague account um, that ultimately we got one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars of the taxpayers money we're holding on to. And we don't really know what we're doing with it. I mean, if we raise money to buy a fire truck, we know we're getting a fire truck. If we raise money to buy a pickup or a one ton, we know we're getting a one ton. We don't know what they're doing with that. And the fact that we don't even have anything on there now that's separated, where we're is not, it going? I mean, at what point do we return that money to the taxpayers? I put a very concise question on there that says, does the town wish to raise and appropriate funds with the purpose of buying land in the town of Reedfield? So as of this year, we're not adding anything to that. And the goal is to have a committee to discuss what that, that current valuation that's in there to devise, what does that mean? And what would, mm -hmm. what could we do with it? But there's nothing as of right now, there's nothing in this upcoming year going into that fund balance right. or decided on what could be done with it. And that'll probably be, no. We know that's going to be part of the open space committee working group discussion mm -hmm. to figure that out and to let us know what they want. And then, of course, it all comes to us for approval to then put, put out more. to the voters. So I know you guys have mentioned committee several times. So is that kind of conservation? No, we said that we asked about this earlier in the year. I don't remember what meeting, but it was a year and a half ago. Uh, we did it again this year. We did it again this year, but because the a lot of the people that might be engaged in those conversations are currently working on other the fairgrounds project, um, they appreciated if we waited till after that part was finished. Yeah. So just another committee to kind of talk about a topic that's kind of cons in my mind is under conservation. But we open, can table that for now. But open space isn't just what you're saying. And so it involves the trails and conservation and age friendly cemetery and the cemeteries yeah. and all those same people, just like the uh, fairgrounds property had lots of different interests. Okay. Um, and like, there's a really good article. It was in the, well, at the top of the KJ today about Reedfield U. And one of them was the woman who's coming to talk about um, Kennebec land trust mm. and talking about how many acres in Reedfield are owned by the Kennebec Land Trust and how many have easements. And it noted that all of those acres are taxable and they pay taxes on them. So people need to understand that just because it may be in conservation doesn't mean that they're not paying taxes. But just um, for, for this warrant though, there's nothing, nothing there's nothing hidden or not broken out this year because we just it's just not in there does that help with what you were asking david yeah i just think it, it i feel like it ought to be addressed that's that's money that we have in an that account. the taxpayers paid mm -hmm. that we don't yeah. really have a purpose for and i feel at a certain point it should be returned to the taxpayers or have a very precise purpose yep. by for next, it by next year's town know. meeting we'll have that Um, is that good for uh, um, 
Yeah, so uh, uh, solid waste ordinance. <laughs> um, uh, this is the second draft. Uh, we heard a lot of feedback from the board about um, uh, some, some uh, editorial things, um, but also uh, some substantive stuff. Uh, we um, went through and pulled, um, tried to clarify, tried to be as concise as we could. We also pulled the definitions uh, and moved those into a, an appendix um, that can and, and probably will be amended by the select board, not by the cemetery committee, not by the, or excuse me, not by the solid waste committee or by the transfer station manager, but by the select board, uh, because the definition of waste changes so much. Um, in the last two years, three years, we've seen just major changes in what's acceptable, what's not, how it comes in. Um, and so those definitions, uh, I think, need some flexibility. So we pulled those out um, to, to make this ordinance more uh, concise, but also to give that flexibility so that if we need to make adjustments um, by we, the select board, uh, you have that ability. Um, and it doesn't have to go back to um, uh, a town meeting vote to, to change the definition of what uh, recyclable is, because it might go back and forth a few times on plastic film or another type of material. So um, that was a big change. We pulled those pieces out. Um, and then uh, everything else uh, really either came from uh, recommendations from the Solid Waste Committee, recommendations from um, Catherine or Jaron. Um, and then um, uh, uh, Karen and I also made a few small edits uh, to um, uh, clarify some items. Uh, Basically, I think that um, the, what was the most important one that I saw, um, uh, uh, Karen had clarified things around commercial haulers, making sure that they were very specific about what their definition was and their role. Um, and then uh, we also had uh, um, a clarification that, um, ex that with, with waste, that when people drop materials off, um, that, that they're expected to be um, depositing the waste, not the staff. Um, we don't have the staff and it's also a liability for us to do that. We do and will make exceptions for uh, those with accessibility needs, um, whether it's a disability or a mobility challenge. Um, and we have that under a policy that, um, that's, um, that clearly specifies that, but um, we just wanted to make sure that people didn't expect that we would be unloading their vehicles for them because some people expect that and um, some towns do that, but we just don't have the staff. And I really don't want to deal with the, the cuts and the workers comp claims that come along with people handling materials like that. Um, uh, we did clarify um, the wood waste pile uh, to say that that's brush only. In the past that had included uh, demolition debris, but um, there was always a challenge of keeping stuff out of there that, that didn't belong. So I think a lot of these changes um, will affect our operation positively. Uh, and again, there wasn't a big difference here other than really moving those, um, those language um, definitions out into an appendix uh, and everything else is pretty static. I'll make a motion to approve the current version of the refilled waste disposal and recycling ordinance. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. I can make a motion now. <laughs> New business. Uh, I'd like to make a motion first to extend the meeting by 15 minutes. I'll second. It's moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. But let's those, not use it. All those, further, <laughs> all those in favor? Thank you. Uh, 24110, consider road sweeping service proposals. Eric? Uh, so we uh, reached out to regional uh, and local um, sweeping contractors. Uh, I gave them a direct mailing and emailing of um, the RFP. And uh, Ellis Construction, our current service provider, was the only one who responded uh, with uh, pricing that was good for three years um, and is... Oh, not terribly higher than what we currently pay. I think we're paying 150 now uh, and 25. So um, uh, my recommendation is that we continue uh, working with Ellis Construction uh, under their contract conditions as presented. Is this for a three-year contract? This is for 24, 25, and 26 seasons, yep. I'll make a motion to approve the contract proposal from Ellis Construction for sweeping for the next three years, 20, fiscal 25, 26, 27. Second. I have a motion and a second. 
Any further discussion? Is that the going rate that's been? Uh, like I said, it's a little bit higher than what they've charged in the past, but um, okay. uh, getting any kind of uh, construction equipment, earthwork, wh whatever, for less than 200 bucks an hour is a deal right now. So and they're locked in for three years. They're locked in for three years. Yeah, that's right. right. So mm -hmm. they get the same rate for the next two years. That's yep. good. And they've always been good, um, except for the hydraulic leak in the yard, <laughs> which is all gone. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> all those in favor? Thank you. It was unanimous. Excellent. 24111, consider a multi town collaborative housing grant opportunity. Eric. Uh, so um, uh, the title says most of what's there. Um, this is a fairly large grant application. Um, uh, the town of Winthrop approached uh, myself and the, uh, the, the Man uh, Manchester town manager about um, uh, looking at housing regionally. Um, I think that this is a, a good opportunity for the town of Reedfield uh, because it will allow us to do a couple things at once. Uh, one is to look at planning um, for housing in our own town and gathering information that we need uh, in order to even start the discussion around housing. It was one of the major top, top priorities that we had in the comprehensive plan. I know it's been discussed a lot, um, but we don't really know how or, 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 or when uh, or if to proceed with any of these actions because we don't really have a full understanding of what we have for an inventory, what the problem is. Uh, this grant would help us understand the nature of, of the, the problem, uh, help us deal with some of the um, impacts that we're going to see from the LD 2003 legislation, um, and also uh, help us think regionally about housing. One of the things that we recognize going into this is that housing is too big for just Reedfield. It can't be the town of Reedfield trying to take care of this. Um, it's not really the right approach. Um, we need uh, to look at things regionally and have regional support. Um, and the other half of this grant would allow us to, to, to look regionally at the housing situation and come up with some plans for how that might um, um, work and how we might integrate so that places like Winthrop and Manchester who have public water and sewer, who have a lot of amenities, um, they might be more um, likely, and, and certainly in my view, are more suited to higher density, multifamily, multi-unit developments. Uh, whereas Reedfield, uh, we could, we should be looking at our strengths, which are, um, you know, we have available land, um, and we have, uh, you know, certain um, uh, things that that. Right now, we're kind of being forced to do, but we have capacity with secondary units and things like that. Um, but I think it's important for us to understand what we have going on regionally and also in Reed Field. Uh, and this grant would effectively allow us to understand some of those things, um, to investigate a few options, um, but not necessarily, um, again, it's planning work. So there's no obligation that we have to implement any of this stuff. Uh, this is just um, us uh, doing our best to understand the issue and perhaps work regionally if we can. So. Um, you said the, the last thing you said, I think is the most important thing I thought I was getting at this, that, that there is no obligation to construct anything. This is for planning. Work. This is for planning purposes. Yeah. Did we talk to the planning board about any of this? Uh, I did share this with uh, Paula um, and um, uh, she didn't have any objections to it but that it hasn't gone before the board like how 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 long has this been like information been out there it seems like uh, a couple it's, a, it's week. a total impacting what they do it seems um i mean it's their area of of um review but they typically wouldn't be engaged in this level of planning work um for example it's very similar to what they did with the ld 2003 work they had a con a consultant and a contractor do a lot of the work for them and they reviewed and commented and edited that. So there would be a small obligation here for them and a small obligation for me time-wise. Um, but uh, given the, the nature of what's being proposed and I think the value in meeting one of our comprehensive plan goals, uh, I think it's worth the, the investment of time. Catherine? So in looking at this, I see this as kind of like the solar ordinance. So when we had our first solar farm come into Reedfield, we didn't really have much of a solar ordinance and we found out the hard way that we needed one. And so we made one and now we have another solar farm coming in and it's strictly regulated to what Reedfield decided we wanted. Um, so for me, I think this would provide us with 
that framework where the planning board could then say, yes, we like this and put it out to the voters. Is this what we like? Um, and it, it could even provide a lot of restrictions. Like for instance, we wouldn't have anything more than two stories or we wouldn't have any buildings allowed that have say more than five units in a building or 10 units. Um, I don't see it as just having to say, oh, we're gonna have a whole bunch of other kinds of housing in Rayfield. I think it would allow us to, to have that conversation at someone else's expense. And ahead of the time that we get a, um, a development plan sent to the planning board, at which point we can't stop anything because you have to have your ordinance in place ahead of time. Once the request comes in, then they get to go on what we have currently. So um, I see it as a really small part of time six hours from chip and four hours from eric a month for a year ten so hours a year. month so dave um yeah i i feel like we did what we needed to do for the mandate i'm not a fan of bringing housing projects here or affordable housing uh, that's about all I've got to say about that. <laughs> yeah. So see, I see this as a way to, to accomplish that. Because if you, if you don't want it, you have to have something in your land use ordinance that says, these are the restrictions. And if we don't have those and someone comes in and says, oh, I bought this piece of land and I want to put 20 you know, tiny homes on them. If but we don't, don't have something that restricts that, then they can do it. Don't we already, our ordinances don't allow somebody to put 20 uh, tiny houses on one lot now, do they? Well, it depends on what size the lot is. So, I mean, we have our own ordinances in places now. I mean, can't we change our own ordinances? We or, could, but do we want to have to spend the time and money to do that? Or can we have a grant writer do that? I mean, not a grant writer, it's a, they're proposing a new planner that Winthrop would hire. I don't really see how, uh, what Winthrop and Manchester, the to totally different towns to me than what we've got going. I don't, I don't see the, that's just my two cents. Yeah, well, no, I agree with you, Dave. And that's why I think this is a good um, opportunity because uh, if we can help encourage them to, to do, to put the kind of development that, that belongs in those more built up, developed uh, service center oriented areas, uh, then it's less likely that someone's going to try to do something like that in, in, in Reed field. That's so, I would agree with. <laughs> right. Send it what, does our, what is our current, I guess for me, I keep thinking about what is, what is the ordinance that we've just been working on under LD 2003 and how, how will that impact this information? And I don't see why Winthrop and Manchester can't do this and still make their plans without us being engaged. They could, they but could. Um, that would be letting yeah. them control our destiny to some extent because these issues are regional. Um, and if we don't have a, a role, uh, I think that we could find ourselves in a position where um, we're seeing squeeze from those towns coming into our town. Um, not that that's a, a bad thing, depending on how you look at it, but I think it's worth planning for. Wayne is in the middle of a really big issue right now with their campground that used to have, I don't know, 20 or so campground spaces. And now Jellystone Campground National Park has put in a, um, a request to make this into 125 slots with gigantic camper vehicles in there and a big water park and all sorts of things right on the lake with abutting property owners. And what they, the abutting property owners have found out is that what Wayne had and thought was protecting them never talked about not having a big campground. And so now everybody's lawyered up and everybody's fighting this on, on all sides. You know, the abutters, the lake association, the town, the people who are developing it because they didn't have the foresight to plan ahead. So I just see this as a, an well, easy I, way to, to bring in the control that we want. I think that's always going to happen. That there's always going to be a loophole. There's always going to be. It, I, I don't think you can possibly write an ordinance that fixes everything, no matter 
how much grant money you get. That's it. So I, I, I think you're probably right about that, Dave. Not probably you are right about that. But I also think that if we have the capability to do our very best and think ahead about it, I don't think it hurts us to try to do that. You know, um, I feel pretty similarly to you, I think, in terms of what kind of development I'd like to see in Reedfield. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that, you know, there are forces outside of our town, outside of our control that may feel differently about things. And I just feel like anything we can do to, to think ahead and plan ahead about it, maybe it can't prevent everything, but maybe we can make it some of the things that we want more likely to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, to me, it's just like, I don't want to ignore it until it's right in front of us, you know? So that, well, we learned a lot when we didn't do a ordinance about buoys down at the boat landing <laughs> by waiting to let Winthrop do it first. So, <laughs> right. you know, sometimes I, I think sometimes waiting doesn't hurt either. I, I'm really, I, I spoke to Eric about this. Oh, I'm sure. really on the fence on this uh -huh. one, personally, because I think we're doing a good job. I really trust our planning board, and I think we got a lot of good ordinances in place. And I just think that, sure, regionally, it's good to know what they're doing, but we're going to know what they're doing after this anyway. And I'm not sure... I'm not sure how great Chip's going to be adding an extra six hours a month to his schedule towards any project. And I, and I worry about that level of work that we're going to have to put in over a year. Yeah. And, you know, I just I mean, think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be for Chip, just to be clear. It wouldn't be for Chip. This isn't a code officer thing. This is a... It a, says that in the grant. It does. It says six yeah. hours for the code enforcement officer from the town it's of Reedfield. Listed in the for for, for, for uh, per month? Did I misread? Per month. Yep. Uh, huh. Yeah. Well, well um... I guess I misread that then. Four it's, hours for you and six hours for Chip. You know, I, I can just say yeah. I am opposed. I'm just going to put that right out there. Um, it seems the thing I have, we have a planning board. So is this taking away the process we have in place where if someone has a proposal for something and it goes to the planning board and it has to go through all of these loops or hoops and then we have a public discussion and a public vote on it. Is that all going away? Is that what they're actually trying to tell us that we can't decide what happens in our town anymore? And if that's not not the at case, all, it's the exact opposite. It's us deciding what we want in our town. But actively. we keep having outside people write our ordinances, write our comprehensive plan, write our. No, I didn't. trust. I trust our local people. I don't like the wording in this at all. Um, when it talks about housing development, particularly affordable workforce housing, other housing related projects, mixed use development. I don't think what's coming out of here um, is going to benefit us if, and I don't think we're conducive to the kind of development that Winthrop and Manchester can house. So for us to spend all this time and effort um, when I don't think we're going to be the target because we don't have water and septic. And we have good things in place. I, I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm opposed to this whole regional agreement. I just want to be clear that members of Reedfield wrote the comp plan, Carol. I don't think that's fair for you to attack that in because that was written by volunteers of Reedfield. So some of it, okay. all, virtually all of it. All of it. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was well, I'll take that off the discussion of stuff. put together by KV Cog, but, which we as a board voted to hire okay. to do I'll that just administrative job. Um, well, I'll just reiterate what I think I've heard Steve say. I, I think planning ahead is a good thing. And I think just for what Carol said is exactly the reason we should do this because there are strong feelings about we don't want certain things in our town. And if we don't write that in somewhere, then those things can come and you can't stop them after the fact. Um, and absolutely, I mean, I agree with what Eric said. It, it should be really different what's in Winthrop even than what's in Manchester. I mean, Winthrop has a downtown and they've got a mill building that's partially empty that could be refurbished re uh, and utilized differently. Reedfield and Manchester don't have anything like that. And so I think the regional approach is really good because as, as a group, Manchester and Wayne can say, you know, the, and 
in Reedfield can say, these things don't fit in our town. They fit in the Winthrop town. So look at that. And then when you have a developer come to Reedfield or come to this part of Kennebec County and say, I want to, you know, make some money here. There's land available. I'm going to buy it. What can I do? Well, there'll be a plan in place if the planning board agrees with it and we put it into the land use ordinance, which the town would do. Um, so I, I think it's a lot of protection for us. And, and another part of that that I think is important is that I like the idea that we will have someone who is hearing what we're saying here and who feels the same way himself in the inside instead of on the outside. I think there's a benefit to having someone from our town on the inside of these discussions, not just having them happening without us knowing what's going on. So I, I guess I feel just the opposite of, of, of you and this one, Carol. I think I, I feel that there is real benefit to being a part of the discussion and having our voice at no cost to us. Right. Well, very little cost. Yeah, there, there is time. There, there's I time. Think, yeah, I think I had just, yeah, it's not I, there's no cost. Yeah, I think I'd seen that piece about the CEO, but I had just discounted it a little bit because it's on page twenty. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I remember that now. But um, no, I, I also say, remember yeah. under LD two thousand three that Winthrop and Manchester meet the threshold to have to do something. We don't. No, I, I agree. And I think um, that's another big point of that is I, I understand that there's a need for conversation on land use um not just land use but our housing in general but i i don't think this is the right i don't think this is the right avenue so the thing that we did have um these outside consultants do what did that create for us that they were for, like for amending our land use ordinance what did they do for us that that we need this, or what didn't they do for us that we need this additional? They, they were working with something that was forced upon us. This is an opportunity for us to decide what we want. Um, the, the, we were LD 2003, the state said, you need to do this, this is how you need to do it. You have very little wiggle room, get it done. That's what Brandon's been having to deal with with the planning board is, is just responding to a mandate. Um, this is the opposite of that. It's us having an opportunity to plan what we would like. Uh, and if, if we don't like the results of this, we don't have to implement it. It's just like the comprehensive plan in that respect. Not that I want to tie these two things because I know how you feel about the comp plan, but um, it's the same idea. If we don't like what we see, that's the end of it. Um, but I do think it's an opportunity for the town to do some uh, thoughtful planning and to take some control of the direction, um, even if it's a small amount uh, of, of where things are going and what um, type of housing we want, in part by those towns that are required to take action, making sure that, that they think about us and that we think about ourselves in that discussion. So I need I, to interrupt for a minute. Uh, I make a motion to extend the meeting for yeah, five no, minutes. Think, yeah, we're, we're all sorry. <laughs> Second, all those in favor? Unanimous. Because I was at the um, planning board meeting where the gentleman that we hired was saying what they were doing and why, and they specialized in crafting a town's response to the ordinance or to the new bill. Um, and I thought that's, that was great. So somebody that knew what he was doing and he's doing it for towns all over the state, we're giving our response to that. So I felt good about that. Um, mm. Can I call I, I, for a vote? Yeah, might as well. I think we're gonna go around. I think. <laughs> we don't have a motion. Oh. All right, I'll make a motion that we accept the grant opportunity as presented. A second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you. Okay. Uh, other business, we have the uh, select board calendar. There was a discussion about um, uh, avoiding um, April 8th because most people will be out of town looking for dark skies. Um, and so the thought was that we could move to um, an April 1st meeting uh, and then uh, uh, scratch the uh, uh, second meeting in March and um, scratch the April 8th meeting. Say that again. So we'll, dates. we'll so, give up the 25th and the 8th and have one on the 1st. So one meeting instead of two. 
Oh, so this and like Catherine said, it's not an the, April yeah. Fool's joke. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So this schedule at the end of the agenda is the, the way it current. is. current, right, because okay. we need to change it. Eric can't really, shouldn't really change it. So right. have one on the 25th, one on the 1st. No. 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 Forgo the 25th. Forget, forget the 25th, add the 1st, and forget the 8th. So we're when do we go to the RSU meeting? That's the 27th? Yeah, it actually makes one last yes. month, one, one last meeting in March. For you guys, yeah. Works for me. Everybody okay with doing that? So we're meeting on the first, not on the twenty fifth of March, and not on right. the eighth of April. Yeah. And you'll change it on the calendars, Eric. Eric. Yes, I will. And so, so we'll just to do a vote on that. Okay. Just so um, not our heads. We do have that joint meeting on the twentieth, and then you have the meeting, as noted, with the school board on the twenty seventh. Just a reminder that we have the Spirit of America Awards nominations coming up too. So think about that. And are we finalizing the warrant on the first? Um, I don't believe so. I'll have to look. Um, I'll have to look at the schedule. But I thought that was later in April. But let me uh, let me check on that for you. I find it real quick. Because our first. Oh, our first thing is on the 8th of May and the second is on the 29th and the 8th is just before absentee ballots go out. So we had um, a final approval for the um, budget and warrant by the select board on uh, um, Let's see, that would be uh, April. Yeah, so that was April 8th, yeah. So we would be doing that on the 1st. Um, yeah, we would be doing that on the 1st. So that would get backed up by a week. Does that work? Works for me. Okay. Please make sure you sign this warrant before you leave. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 <laughs> All those in favor? What about discussion? Oh, <laughs> <laughs>